The realm of outer space has always been a reservoir of mysteries, home to awe-inspiring phenomena that challenge our understanding of the cosmos. One such incident occurred when a large, unidentified object made an appearance on the live camera feed from the International Space Station. This occurrence has incited intrigue and speculation, prompting us to explore the nature of this event and its implications. As of right now, people are struggling to explain what this object is. Those interested in the unknown have said that this isn't the first time that something strange has been detected by the International Space Station cameras. While skeptics have said that it's likely space debris, a camera glitch, or part of the International Space Station. Firstly, let's consider the nature of this incident. The live camera feed from the International Space Station, accessible to the public, offers a unique perspective on our planet and the expanse of space. On this particular day, an anomalous object, significantly larger than the usual specks of light or fleeting shadows seen in the camera feed, made an appearance. The sight of this unidentified object triggered an immediate flurry of excitement, speculation, and numerous hypotheses about its possible origins. Those inclined to believe in advanced visitation saw it as potential evidence of a spacecraft. The size and visibility of the object, coupled with its location in the vicinity of the space station, bolstered their claims. The sighting was proposed as an indication of advanced civilizations, showing interest in human space activities, or perhaps observing Earth. Moreover, such incidents serve as reminders of the vastness of space 
and the multitude of phenomena yet to be understood. They highlight the need for continued space exploration and scientific investigation, driven by our inherent curiosity and the desire to understand the cosmos better. Oddly enough, shortly after this object was seen, the live camera's broadcast was switched off. First and foremost, it's important to realize that maintaining a live feed from space is no small task. It requires a seamless interplay of advanced technology, terrestrial infrastructure, and space-based equipment. Disruptions in the live feed can be triggered by numerous factors unrelated to the appearance of unidentified objects, such as equipment malfunction, data transmission loss, or software issues. An unidentified object's sudden appearance could be of significant scientific interest. Pausing the live feed allows scientists to study the event in more detail, potentially using specialized equipment or techniques. This helps ensure that an accurate understanding is derived, unhampered by public opinion or premature conclusions. The airspace around the Earth isn't just a scientific interest, it's also a domain of national security. If an object is detected that could potentially be related to covert activities or unknown technology, it's plausible that the live feed would be stopped to allow for private, secure analysis by appropriate authorities. While it may seem counterintuitive, temporarily suspending the live feed during a sighting might be a strategy to maintain public trust. If an object cannot be immediately identified and explained, leaving the feed running might lead to rampant speculation, confusion, or even panic. Ensuring they have all the facts before making a public statement allows NASA to provide accurate information, upholding their role as a reliable source of scientific knowledge. Of course, the most captivating theory is that NASA is hiding evidence of extraterrestrial life. While this idea is thrilling, it's worth noting that such a discovery would be a landmark scientific achievement, unlikely to be concealed. The idea of unidentified objects has captivated human imagination for decades. While many sightings on Earth remain disputed, an intriguing and lesser-known phenomenon involves unidentified objects appearing near the International Space Station. The International Space Station, a collaborative space endeavor involving multiple nations, orbits Earth approximately every 90 minutes, enabling astronauts to witness breathtaking views of our planet. However, among these extraordinary vistas, some astronauts have reported witnessing peculiar unidentified objects traversing the cosmos. These mysterious sightings at the space station have sparked curiosity and concern among both scientists and the public as they challenge conventional beliefs about the existence of advanced life. Since the International Space Station's inception in 1998, there have been several instances where astronauts have claimed to witness unidentified objects during their missions. In 2005, astronaut Leroy Chiao captured video footage showing a strange, fast-moving object outside the space station. Similarly, during a live broadcast in 2016, astronaut Jeff Williams observed a mysterious glowing object that he could not explain. Moreover, in 2020, astronaut Chris Cassidy reported seeing an unidentified object with a frosted appearance while conducting a spacewalk. These accounts are compelling, given that they come from highly trained professionals with keen eyes and scientific backgrounds. When confronted with reports of sightings at the space station, Scientists and experts have proposed various potential explanations to rationalize these enigmatic occurrences. One plausible reason for such sightings could be space debris, fragments from defunct satellites or rocket stages. As the International Space Station operates in low Earth orbit, it is susceptible to encountering debris, which might appear as fast-moving objects. Another possibility is that some of the sightings might be optical illusions or natural phenomena that astronauts misinterpreted as unidentified objects in the vastness of space. Cosmic rays, reflections from spacecraft windows, or atmospheric distortions could distort astronauts' perceptions, leading them to believe they spotted unidentified objects. Nonetheless, there remains a subset of sightings that defy conventional explanations, challenging our current understanding of the cosmos. These sightings continue to intrigue researchers and the public, spurring further investigation into the existence of advanced life and civilizations beyond Earth. The discovery of advanced life is a profound question that has fascinated humanity for centuries. The prospect of unidentified objects at the International Space Station adds a new dimension to the quest for answers about life beyond Earth. 
If these objects are indeed advanced spacecrafts, it could revolutionize our understanding of the universe and our place within it. The possible existence of intelligent life raises questions about the origin, evolution and distribution of life in the cosmos. If these sightings at the International Space Station are evidence of advanced civilizations, it suggests that our galaxy could be teeming with advanced beings, each with its unique history and culture. This potential revelation challenges our anthropocentric view of the universe and humbles us to contemplate our significance in the vastness of space. Moreover, these sightings at the space station also highlight the importance of international cooperation in space exploration and the need for greater collaboration in addressing the mysteries of the universe. The International Space Station itself stands as a symbol of unity among nations, showcasing the potential for global cooperation in the exploration of space and the pursuit of knowledge. As of right now, unidentified object sightings at the International Space Station are a perplexing and captivating aspect of space exploration. While some of these sightings can be explained by space debris or optical illusions, a subset remains unexplained, stimulating curiosity about the possibility of advanced life. Whether these sightings will ultimately be attributed to advanced civilizations or simply remain an enigmatic aspect of our cosmic journey, they have already left an indelible mark on our understanding of the universe and our place within it. The quest to comprehend these sightings serves as a reminder of the ever-present mystery and wonder that lies beyond our planet's boundaries, urging us to continue exploring the cosmos with an open mind and a sense of wonder. Missing stars could point to alien civilizations. Researchers comparing views of the Lupus the Wolf constellation taken in 1950 and then again in 2016 noticed that a star was missing. This alone is nothing incredibly mysterious, but subsequent studies noted that this single disappearing star was not alone. There were in fact hundreds of unaccounted for stars that have disappeared over the decades, with apparently no explanation. A new study has been published in the Astronomical Journal that attempts to understand how so many stars could just disappear without a trace, and the implications are astonishing. Led by Beatrice Villarol, the authors state in the report that unless a star directly collapses into a black hole, there is no known physical process by which it could physically vanish. The implications of finding such objects extend from the traditional astrophysics field to the more exotic searches for evidence of technologically advanced civilizations. Essentially, the authors believe that one of the clearest explanations for the disappearing stars is the involvement of extraterrestrial life. They have identified so-called hotspots, where there seem to be a surprising number of missing stars, and believe that homing in on these locations for further study and analysis could be a way to target potential locations of extraterrestrial life. Many researchers believe that, if advanced alien civilizations were to exist, they would have likely developed what is hypothetically known as a Dyson Sphere. This megastructure would allow the civilization to encompass a star to harness the reactions occurring on this star for energy, and the researchers conducting this study acknowledge that this could be a possible reason for hundreds of stars to disappear so suddenly. However, researchers are hesitant to acknowledge theories such as this, especially given the frequency with which proposed extraterrestrial activity has turned out to have a much more natural explanation. But, even if the disappearance of the stars had nothing to do with aliens, finding out what natural occurrence caused them to blink out of view would still be a huge step for researchers. Villarol noted that finding an actually vanishing star or a star that appears out of nowhere would be a precious discovery and certainly would include new astrophysics beyond the one we know of today. So for now, researchers are continuing to probe the circumstances of this disappearance in the hopes that they either locate extraterrestrial life or uncover groundbreaking previously unknown principles of astrophysics. Solar Orbiter Spacecraft Captures Huge Eruption on the Sun Huge is perhaps an understatement here. The eruption caught by the Solar Orbiter's Extreme Ultraviolet Imager is in fact the largest solar prominence eruption ever observed in a single image which also contains the Sun in its entirety. G2 
jetting out millions of miles into space from the sun's surface, it was lucky that the ejection was not aimed in the direction of our Earth. An absolute milestone observation in space and for the mission, this rare image is expected to provide a lot of data surrounding solar activities for the joint NASA-European team behind the mission. While other spacecrafts have caught solar prominences on camera before, the magnitude of the ejection caught has either been smaller than this one or their positioning or distance has meant that the Sun's disk was not fully featured in the image, as it was in this case. Solar prominences are complex phenomena. According to a statement made by the European Space Agency, they can be described as large structures of tangled magnetic field lines that keep dense concentrations of solar plasma suspended above the Sun's surface, sometimes taking the form of arching loops. Additionally, they are also often associated with coronal mass ejections, which refers to eruptions of charged particles occasionally emitted by the Sun. Coronal mass ejections are highly disruptive to us here on Earth, though, as they interfere with technologies such as satellites, power lines, and various other similar infrastructures. The solar orbiter's next bypass of the Sun takes place on the 26th of March, and it is expected to pass the Sun with even closer proximity than last time, opening up many opportunities for new, remarkable data to be sourced. James Webb Telescope Captures Countless Galaxies in New Image The images provided by the James Webb Telescope are truly phenomenal, providing glimpses and perspectives deemed unimaginable, with resolutions that are truly impressive. To us, these pictures are beautiful. For the experts, there is so much more contained within them. The lucky image selected as Image of the Month showcases a number of galaxies, with the spiral galaxy with the catchy name LEDA, 2046648 two, being visible on the bottom left-hand side. This galaxy is more than a billion light-years away from us, and for those who are particularly well-versed in looking out for these feats, you can see this galaxy within the Hercules constellation. We have only just been able to lay our eyes upon this photo ourselves. It has been in the works for months. Webb has been on duty taking observations and measurements, obtaining images of exoplanets and galaxies for a few months now. During the commissioning process for the Near Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph, known as NIRIS, one of many components of the Webb Space Telescope, we saw this photo come about. NIRIS was investigating a white dwarf star. While the Near Infrared camera captured this stunning shot of LEDA 2046648 and its distant pals in the sky. One of the initial aims for the James Webb Space Telescope is to investigate what is going on within the distant universe. This image of LEDA 2046648 is not an example of deep field imagery, though this is one avenue that has provided a great deal of similar shots. Deep field imagery is one aspect of the Webb Telescope that lets us see the oldest light sources, a process that works via gravitational lensing looking at how distant lights can become magnified and warped. It's truly amazing to see such a gorgeous photo, and even more amazing to know that there is so much more in it that we are yet to see. NASA Space Telescope spots most powerful light ever seen on Jupiter. Just this month, scientists from the New Star Space Observatory have detected the highest light ever reported from Jupiter making it the first telescope to ever detect such high-energy light from the gas giant. This solves a mystery which has been unsolved since 1992. The question of why the Ulysses mission saw no X-rays when it flew past Jupiter. Yes, X-rays are indeed a form of light, but with much higher energies and wavelengths and are unable to be seen by the human eye. However, Ulysses was specifically capable of sensing higher energy X-rays, which would mean it would have been able to witness some level of light when passing over Jupiter. According to astrophysicist Kaya Mori, it is quite challenging for planets to generate X-rays in the range that New Star detects. So how exactly did scientists see this coming from Jupiter? Jupiter has an enormous magnetic field, and it is spinning very quickly. Those two characteristics mean that the planet's magnetosphere acts like a giant particle accelerator, 
and that is what makes these higher energy emissions possible. However, the Ulysses back in 1992 was capable of sensing higher energy X-rays. So why didn't it? According to a new study, the light that comes from the energetic electrons that NASA's spacecraft Juno can detect, with its Jovian auroral distributions experiment, known as JADE, and its Jupiter Energetic Particle Detector Instrument, known as JEDI, are the culprit of Bremsstrahlung, an extremely fast-moving set of electrons. These particles produce light when the electrons encounter charged atoms in Jupiter's atmosphere. William Dunn, a researcher at the University College London, says that the discovery of these emissions leaves us with more questions. We know that rotating magnetic fields can accelerate particles, but we do not fully understand how they reach such high speeds on Jupiter. New Star left Earth on June 13, 2012, and today, a decade later, we are reaping the benefits of new knowledge, but who knows what we will discover in the next decade. Closest black hole system to Earth contains no black holes. Sometimes when we make a scientific discovery, we need to undiscover something we thought we knew. Disproving the existing research, theories and hypotheses is what allows us to make advancements and develop our understanding of the universe. In 2020, a team of astronomers from the European Southern Observatory said they had found a black hole, reported as the closest to Earth in the HR6819 system, only 1,000 light-years away. This was not a claim that was generally agreed upon, with an international team based in Belgium contesting the results. A paper published in March 2022 says that in this black hole system, there is no black hole. So, if there is no black hole in HR6819, what have we spotted? The Belgian team has suggested that this is what is known as a vampire two-star system, which is in a rare part of its life cycle, making it less easily identifiable. The original study welcomed this criticism. After all, science is about making discoveries and advancing knowledge, not accepting everything as the truth. Thomas Ravinius, a Chile-based astronomer and the lead author on the initial paper, said, Not only is it normal, but it should be that results are scrutinised. Given the data the team had available, the original conclusion did seem perfectly viable. They believed HR6819 was a triple system, meaning one star orbited a black hole over a 40-day period, and a second star orbited the same black hole over a much greater period of time. The Belgian study, however, led by Julia Bodensteiner, suggested that there are two stars in the system, both on a 40-day orbit, though there was no black hole. This means that earlier in the timeline, one of these stars would have to have been much bigger but over time lost some of its size and mass to the smaller star. The teams concluded that gathering new data, making the most of different equipment, would reveal which hypothesis was more accurate. The Very Large Telescope and Very Large Telescope Interferometer were used to help gather more definitive data. The newly combined teams confirmed that there was not a brighter star in a wider orbit and the fresh data helped to determine that HR6819 is in fact a binary system with no black hole. This team is continuing observations, working on a joint study over time to figure out the evolution and limits. Who knows where the actual closest black hole to Earth is? Scientists may have discovered a new layer within the Earth. Geographers, geologists, and physical scientists get ready to see the rules rewritten. Your textbooks may have it all wrong. Although difficult to observe, geophysicists think they have determined that the Earth has five core layers, rather than just the traditional four. Previously, it was thought with confidence that the Earth was made up of these layers, the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. However, new data analysts have suggested that the inner core is not actually the Earth's innermost layer. Hence, the discovered fifth layer is being labelled the innermost inner layer, quite literally. The lead scientists working this case are from the Australian National University and report that they used special search algorithms to track the history of the Earth's seismic activities in its inner core. 
by studying how long it takes seismic waves to travel through this layer, combined with models designed to predict variables such as wave speed in the inner layer, they have been able to confirm that an innermost inner layer does indeed exist. The research is no accident. Theories have long been circulating about a potential fifth layer of the Earth's core, specifically concerning the structure of the inner core. Up until now, though, there has been no conclusive evidence proving that this is comprised of two layers and not one. While fascinating in itself, this discovery may have consequences to the narrative of the Earth's history as well. A new layer in the Earth's core means a whole new peak into the past, by analyzing this layer's composition of minerals and rock. So far, scientists think they may have found evidence as to a change in the structure of iron, which in turn suggests an additional cooling event in the Earth's history. While we do not know at all for certain what happened in the past to cause this, the prehistoric event is being referred to as an unknown dramatic event in Earth's history. One step deeper into Earth, one huge step forward for theories of the Earth's evolution. Who knows what we will discover about our very own planet next. China spacecraft sends Mars footage for the first time. Breaking news within the early days of 2021 comes from the latest space exploration mission conducted by the China National Space Administration. The 5th of February 2021 saw the release of images and video footage of the surface of Mars captured by China's Mars probe named Tianwen-1. This video footage gives us a closer insight than has ever been possible before, providing a view of Mars's surface. Tianwen-1 entered the Red Planet's orbit on the 10th of February 2021 and captured a clip of the surface of Mars moving in and out of view. The remarkable video footage provided by this aspirational and resoundingly successful mission shows us white craters, according to news reports. The equipment used for this fantastic space exploration quest, Tianwen-1, features a Mars orbiter lander and solar-powered rover and weighs a staggering five tons. This progress in space exploration presents a momentous step forward in the Beijing space program, aiming to compete with the US advancements of NASA. Could Tianwen-1, whose name translates to Questions to Heaven, present a turning point for exponential growth in the China National Space Administration? Current predictions and growth markets suggest that by 2022, there could be a space station fully equipped with a crew established by the China National Space Administration. Increasing the close quarters in this space discovery again is that the first ever United Arab Emirates interplanetary mission accomplished this same feat. Later within the same week, the United Arab Emirates Hope probe entered Mars's orbit too. Such close competition certainly introduces new perspectives and even more levels of success to the Beijing space mission. Whilst Mars has long proved to be a problem and a point of mystery in discovery and space research, we have already gained a wealth of new knowledge from this new video footage, including geological observations from the Shia Pirelli crater and the Valles Marineras canyons. M87 Jet Photograph The M87 galaxy, also known as NGC 4486, seems to be an average oval galaxy, one of many elliptical galaxies in a cluster within the constellation of Virgo. However, M87 holds a fantastic phenomenon inside it, an extraordinary jet of electrons and other such particles traveling at rapid rates, almost challenging the speed of light. The NASA Hubble Space Telescope managed to capture images of the blue jet blasting from the source accompanied by the soft golden light of M87's many stars. M87's jet was first discovered in 1918 when H.D. Curtis, an astronomer of the time, found what he referred to as a curious straight ray, within the radius of what we now know as M87. It was not until the 1950s that we found out more about M87 with the development of our technology when it was found that the jet coming from M87 possessed one of the most prominent, strongest radio waves in the cosmos. Since the 1950s, scientists have studied endlessly to try and uncover the many secrets of M87. Finally, after decades worth of research and hard work, astronomers figured it out. 
In the very center of M87 lies one of the most infamously feared objects in the universe, a gigantic black hole. This black hole, it is believed, has devoured a mass worth the equivalent of two billion times the mass of our Sun, making it colossal in stature. It is this black hole that powers the jet of M87. The jet itself comes from the gas rotating around the black hole, pushed upwards by the powerful magnetic fields that surround the area. The detected radio waves and extraordinary bright light that is visible from the black hole is created because the electrons inside said magnetic fields swirl, known as synchrotron radiation. Of all cosmic jets, M87 is by far the most well-known, giving scientists valuable insight into the laws of our universe. It helps that this galaxy is also the one with the nearest jet, meaning that obtaining information, though difficult, is not as tricky as when gathering intel about jets spawning in other galaxies. M87's jet is not alone. There is a myriad of similar extraplanetary jets of pure energy that we are still trying to uncover the secrets of. Typically, jets occur when a colossal black hole devours gases or entire stars. The radiation reactions cause such phenomena. On a similar note, stars in their infancy are also occasionally known to create short-lived jets, but nothing as intense as what a black hole is able to produce. Unfortunately for us, M87 lies a whole 50 million light-years away, making it near impossible for the current model of the Hubble Space Telescope to see clearly into the galaxy enough to specify individual planets, stars and objects. What is known is that the light captured on photographs is made up of clusters of an incredible number of stars, an estimated 15,000, thought by astronomers to have been created extremely early in the formation of the universe, making these stars predecessors to the second generation of stars. Miniature black holes may be hitting Earth. Black holes are one of those things, a bit like dark matter, that still confuse but also massively intrigue us about the universe. We all know how they stretch light and matter into their vacuum-like existence, making spaghetti out of anything that falls into their reach. But is there more to the story of the black hole than we think? Scientists, in fact, now believe that the universe could be absolutely filled with tiny black holes, hurtling through space like cosmic bullets. Why do they think this? Well, they are slowly running out of ideas to explain what the universe is made up of. And while dark matter is a mysterious yet popular answer, it only accounts for 80% of the universe. Their new supporting theory is therefore loads of tiny black holes which have been around since the beginning of time. This does not necessarily solve much though. For more than 80 years, astrophysicists have failed to discover even the smallest amount of proof that such a thing as dark matter exists, and that it does indeed dictate the gravitational forces which keep the remaining 20% of the universe, the normal, visible matter, in check. Similarly, the new tiny black holes theory does indeed help to avoid the reality that we have no clue what the universe is made up of, but also falls short on the actual evidence front. NASA cosmologists therefore admit that they are running out of ideas fast, and possible sources of tangible evidence are also running scarily low. In terms of these hypothetical miniature black holes hitting Earth, if they do exist, it is of course possible. And although tiny, much smaller than an asteroid, more like a grain of rice, they could cause devastation, it is thought, through deformation and intense heat levels. However, scientists working on this theory believe they would only pass by the Earth roughly once every 100 million years. So whether these mini black holes are science fiction or fact, you will not have to worry about one hitting you just yet. Every day we solve one mystery, discovering something new, while creating new dilemmas for future generations to solve. Equally, trying to solve existing puzzles is by no means easy, and the possibility that there are things we simply will not know the answer to seems to scare us by nature. Yet, time and time again, science proves that there truly is no limit to what is out there for us to learn. In fact, it is only ever increasing by the day. NASA detects dark matter noise. 
scientists have spent centuries staring into space with whatever technology was available at the time, be it the naked eye or top-of-the-line telescopes and satellites. These methods have allowed us to paint startlingly clear pictures of what the world looks like in the mysterious expanse beyond our atmosphere, even if it did not always give us all the answers. Recently, researchers have begun taking a new approach to understanding space. Rather than seeing it, they are attempting to hear it, and what they have heard so far has already proven to be groundbreaking. The new project, run by NASA, uses a process called data sonification to translate data collected throughout the years by various NASA missions into sounds. These missions include the Chandra X-ray Observatory, Hubble Space Telescope and Spitzer Space Telescope, have long provided opportunities to view space from the confines of Earth, and now have shown that incredible things can be discovered as well when we hear space. One of these sounds, compiled by data sonification of the bullet cluster, was transcribed from images of what may be the first direct proof of dark matter. Dark matter's existence has been theorized by many scientists, but it has been incredibly difficult to confirm, as the particles composing dark matter cannot be seen or observed. They do not absorb, emit, or reflect light, so no form of electromagnetic radiation can pin them down. In fact, the only way that researchers have been able to directly observe dark matter is by attempting to measure the effects that it has on the objects around it. Sound waves transcribed from the measures of these effects may have provided a new way to study and observe it at last. In particular, recordings of X-rays from the Chandra Observatory show a region of what is known as gravitational lensing, where hot gas produced by two merging galaxy clusters was rapidly pulled away from what was assumed to be dark matter. These images of the bullet cluster were one of the first pieces of direct proof that researchers had of dark matter, which made it an easy choice for the data sonification project. The data was arranged by frequency, spanning a range with dark matter operating at the lowest frequency all the way to X-rays at the highest. Each frequency was then assigned a pitch, with higher frequencies denoting higher pitches. As the beautiful space music played, full of the high, tinkling notes of galaxies and X-rays, there, at last, was the low, observable hum in the gravitational lensing of dark matter. Astronomers are hopeful that the study of dark matter in this way might reveal previously unknown secrets held by the elusive dark matter. Space has fascinated humans since ancient times. Our ancestors would have looked up at the night sky and wondered about the stars, planets and galaxies they saw. As technology advanced, people began to explore space in greater detail and this has only increased our fascination with it. Interestingly, NASA has captured some strange photographs over the years, causing some to question the origins of the universe and the possibility of advanced life. The Mysterious Towers Photographed on Mars Mars has always been a topic of great interest and fascination for scientists and space enthusiasts. The search for signs of life, the exploration of the planet's geology, and the possibility of colonizing it in the future have been the main focus of numerous space missions to Mars. However, recent discoveries have added a new layer of mystery to the planet, particularly the discovery of three-mile-high towers found in a row on Mars. The discovery was made by the Mars Global Surveyor in 1999, when it captured high-resolution images of the planet's surface. These images showed a strange formation of three structures, each one approximately three miles high, located in a row on the Martian surface. The towers, dubbed the Martian Towers, have since become the subject of speculation and debate among scientists and the public alike. Some believe that they are natural geological formations, while others speculate that they could be artificial structures built by an alien civilization. One theory shared by scientists is that the towers are volcanic in origin, formed by the gradual erosion of the surrounding terrain over millions of years. This explanation is based on the fact that the towers are located in a region of Mars known for its volcanic activity. However, some scientists argue that the tower's symmetry and alignment are not consistent with natural volcanic formations. Another theory is that the towers are the remnants of ancient civilizations that once existed on Mars. 
Some have suggested that the towers could be the remains of massive buildings or communication towers built by an advanced Martian civilization. Those who believe that an advanced civilization once inhabited Mars have pointed out that the universe is billions of years old and said that during this time countless civilizations could have lived on planets close to Earth, saying that Mars could have looked completely different billions of years ago and that these discoveries could be the remnants of these long-forgotten civilizations. Scientists have said, though, that as of right now, there is no concrete evidence to support this theory, and it remains purely speculative. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the discovery of the Martian towers has sparked a renewed interest in Mars and the possibility of life beyond Earth. The towers are just one of many mysteries that continue to intrigue scientists and the public alike, fueling the ongoing search for answers and exploration of the Red Planet. As of right now, the discovery of the three-mile-high towers on Mars has added a new layer of intrigue and fascination to the planet. While the towers' origins remain a mystery, they have sparked a renewed interest in the search for life beyond Earth and the exploration of our neighboring planet. As we continue to explore and discover the secrets of Mars, we may eventually uncover the truth behind the enigmatic Martian towers. Mysterious Creature Photographed on Mars in 2015, a photograph of a crab-shaped object on Mars surfaced, which sparked the imagination of many people interested in the possibility of life on the Red Planet. The photograph was taken by the Mars rover, and while some have dismissed the image as a mere rock formation, others believe it to be evidence of something more intriguing. The photograph in question shows an object that appears to resemble a crab, complete with what looks like claws and legs. Some enthusiasts have even suggested that the image could be proof of an ancient civilization on Mars, with the crab being a statue or artifact left behind by an intelligent species. Of course, it is important to note that there is no concrete evidence to support this theory. NASA and other space agencies have repeatedly denied the existence of extraterrestrial life on Mars, and have explained that many of the unusual shapes and formations seen on the planet's surface are simply the result of natural processes. Still, the crab-shaped object has captured the imagination of many people and has helped to fuel the ongoing debate over the possibility of life beyond Earth. Whether or not the object is evidence of an ancient civilization, it is clear that there is much we have yet to discover about Mars and the mysteries it holds. Regardless of the veracity of this particular image, it is clear that space exploration and the search for advanced life continue to fascinate and captivate us. The possibility of discovering new worlds and new forms of life is a thrilling prospect, and one that drives many people to pursue careers in astronomy, astrophysics and related fields. Whether it is the crab-shaped object on Mars, or something entirely different, the search for knowledge and understanding is a fundamental part of human nature, and one that will continue to drive us forward in the years to come. Why does the International Space Station's cameras switch off when strange objects are seen in the background? There have been many instances where the live feed from the International Space Station has been interrupted or switched off abruptly when an unidentified object is seen approaching it. Many enthusiasts and theorists believe that NASA is deliberately hiding evidence of advanced life by switching off the live stream when such sightings occur. While NASA has never officially commented on these claims, there are several reasons why the live feed may be interrupted during such events. One possible reason for the interruption of the live feed is technical issues or glitches in the communication equipment. The International Space Station relies on a complex network of communication satellites, antennas and ground stations to maintain uninterrupted contact with Earth. These systems are not foolproof and can experience disruptions due to a variety of factors, including solar flares, weather conditions, or equipment malfunctions. As a result, the live stream may be interrupted or lost during such events. Another possible reason for the interruption of the live stream is the need to prioritize communication with the International Space Station crew over the live feed. The crew members are conducting important scientific experiments and need to communicate with mission control on a regular basis. If a mysterious object is detected approaching the ISS, Mission Control may decide to temporarily interrupt the live feed in order to prioritize communication with the crew. Finally, 
It is also possible that NASA does not want to create undue panic or speculation among the general public by broadcasting images of unidentified objects approaching the International Space Station. These sightings and theories have always been a topic of controversy, and NASA may not want to add fuel to the fire by broadcasting such sightings. As of right now, many have pointed out the strange timing between the two events, and suggest that it's a strange coincidence that the cameras switch off the second one of these objects comes into the camera's view. Mysterious objects photographed above the Martian surface. There have been many reports of unidentified objects seen above Mars, which has sparked curiosity and interest among scientists and enthusiasts alike. There are some who argue that these sightings above Mars are evidence of advanced life. The idea that there may be life on other planets, including Mars, has been a topic of fascination and speculation for decades. Some people believe that the objects seen above Mars are proof that intelligent life exists beyond Earth and that these beings are monitoring or studying our planet, further saying that this could be similar to us sending probes to planets like Mars, Saturn and Jupiter. Believers have said that we've done it several times in the past, so there's a possibility that other advanced life forms are sending out their own probes to investigate other planets. Scientists have said that one possible explanation for these sightings is that they are simply natural phenomena or optical illusions. It is well known that Mars has a thin atmosphere which can create mirages and other optical effects that may be mistaken for mysterious aircrafts. Additionally, Mars is subject to frequent dust storms which can create unusual cloud formations or other visual disturbances that might be interpreted as strange objects. Another possibility is that the sightings are the result of human error or misinterpretation. As with all sightings, it is important to consider the possibility that witnesses may have seen something that was not actually a strange aircraft or that they misinterpreted what they saw. This could be due to a number of factors, such as poor lighting conditions, a lack of familiarity with the object being observed, or other visual or cognitive biases. NASA has not publicly acknowledged the existence of mysterious aircrafts on Mars, but there have been reports of strange activity and sightings by NASA's Mars rovers. In fact, some people believe that NASA has been deliberately hiding evidence of these objects on Mars and that the agency is part of a larger plan to keep the existence of advanced life a secret. As of right now, the sightings of these objects above Mars remain a mystery and the explanations for them are still unclear. While it is possible that they are the result of natural phenomena or human error, some people continue to believe that they are evidence of advanced life. The Mysterious Satellite The Black Knight Satellite is a mysterious object orbiting the Earth that has been a subject of fascination and speculation for decades. The origins of the object are unknown, but some believe that it could be an advanced spacecraft, while others suggest it may be a remnant of human space exploration. The story of the Black Knight Satellite begins in the 1950s, when a number of scientists began to report sightings of an unknown object in orbit around the Earth. Some reports suggested that the object was a large, black, artificial satellite, while others described it as a mysterious radio signal that seemed to come from the object. Over the years, a number of photographs and videos have been taken of the object, though its true nature remains a mystery. Some have suggested that the Black Knight satellite is a remnant of human space exploration, perhaps a piece of debris left behind by an early space mission, Others believe that it is an advanced spacecraft that was sent to Earth for unknown reasons. Despite its mysterious origins, the Black Knight satellite continues to capture the imagination of enthusiasts and theorists around the world. Many believe that the object holds secrets about our past, our present and our future, and that it may be the key to unlocking some of the greatest mysteries of the universe. However, there are also those who believe that the Black Knight satellite is simply a piece of space junk, or a product of overactive imaginations and the human desire for mystery and intrigue. Some suggested that the object was a thermal blanket that was lost during a space mission in the 90s, but this doesn't explain how the object was detected by amateur astronomers in the late 1950s. Regardless of its true nature, the Black Knight satellite remains a fascinating and mysterious object, one that continues to captivate the imaginations of people around the world. The mysterious object captured during Apollo 17. Apollo 17 was the final mission of the United States Apollo program, 
which successfully landed humans on the moon. Launched on December 7, 1972, Apollo 17 was the first night launch of a US human spaceflight, and it was also the last crewed mission to the moon. The mission consisted of Commander Eugene Cernan, Lunar Module Pilot Harrison Schmidt, and Command Module Pilot Ronald Evans. Interestingly, during the mission, the astronauts captured a mysterious photograph that showed a triangular-shaped aircraft. Since the dawn of the space age, there have been reports of unidentified objects being seen by astronauts and ground-based observers alike. These reports have included sightings of strange lights, fast-moving objects, and even bizarre-shaped craft that seem to defy conventional explanation. While skeptics have argued that these sightings can be attributed to natural phenomena or misidentified man-made objects, others believe that they are evidence of advanced life. Black triangles are a type of unidentified object that has been reported and observed by many people around the world. These mysterious flying objects are named after their distinct triangular shape and are often described as being black or dark in color with three bright lights at each corner of the triangle. The black triangles have been the subject of much speculation and debate among enthusiasts, theorists and skeptics. While some people believe that these objects are extraterrestrial in nature, others think that they are secret military aircraft or experimental vehicles. Many theories have emerged about the origin and purpose of these mysterious flying objects. Some people believe that they are part of a secret government program such as the Aurora Project, which is rumored to be a top-secret military project involving advanced technology. Others believe that black triangles are of extraterrestrial origin and are part of a wider phenomenon of visitations to Earth. They point to the advanced technology and apparent ability to fly at high speeds and maneuver in ways that are beyond human capabilities as evidence of their extraterrestrial nature. Despite the many sightings and reports of black triangles, no concrete evidence has been found to confirm their existence or explain their origin. The Holographic Universe Theory The Holographic Universe Theory is a scientific hypothesis that suggests that our reality is not entirely real. Instead, it posits that our universe may be a projection or simulation from a two-dimensional surface, much like a hologram. The idea was first introduced in the 1990s by physicist Leonard Susskind, but it has gained popularity in recent years as more evidence has emerged to support the theory. At the core of the holographic universe theory is the concept of holography, which refers to the technique of using a hologram to project a three-dimensional image onto a two-dimensional surface. This process involves capturing the interference patterns of light reflecting off an object and using them to create a hologram, which can then be projected onto a surface to create a three-dimensional image. In the case of the holographic universe theory, the idea is that our entire universe may be a hologram projected onto a two-dimensional surface. This surface, known as the holographic boundary, is thought to exist outside of our observable universe, and it may be responsible for generating the physical laws and properties that govern our reality. One piece of evidence in support of the holographic universe theory comes from the study of black holes. According to the theory of general relativity, a black hole is a region of space where the gravitational pull is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. However, recent research has shown that black holes may actually behave like holograms, with all the information about their contents encoded on their surface. Another piece of evidence comes from the study of cosmic microwave background radiation, which is thought to be the residual heat left over from the Big Bang. The holographic universe theory suggests that this radiation may be a projection from the holographic boundary and that the irregularities in the radiation pattern may be evidence of the holographic nature of our universe. Despite the intriguing evidence in support of the holographic universe theory, it remains a highly speculative hypothesis that has yet to be fully tested. Some physicists argue that the theory is too speculative and lacks sufficient evidence while others believe that it offers a promising new approach to understanding the nature of our reality. Regardless of its ultimate validity, the holographic universe theory serves as a reminder that our understanding of the universe is constantly evolving and that there may be far more to our reality than we can currently comprehend. As new evidence and theories emerge, it is up to scientists and thinkers to explore these ideas and push the boundaries of our knowledge. Aliens could be sucking energy from black holes. 
One way that we might be able to spot distant extraterrestrials is from their ability to harness the power of black holes, scientists have said in a recent report. The potential that distant alien civilizations could be sucking up the energy from black holes could also mean that we would be able to spot it from millions of miles away. The idea is that a kind of technology that harvests the energy of a black hole could leave traces behind. The evidence of such a technology would exist close by to the black hole's event horizon, which is the threshold at which no matter, not even light, can escape. Some have posited that this scenario could explain examples of plasma flares observed in the past, which have been seen to occur nearby black holes. In fact, a new study published in the journal this year has suggested just that. At the moment, this is all conceptual, but the hope is that eventually we may one day be able to harness such a technology ourselves. Such a possibility could give us a near-endless supply of energy, even if the nearest black hole is over 1,000 light-years away. In a closer time scale, astrophysicists are hopeful that a distant, advanced civilization might use similar energy-capturing methods. Luca Camiso, an astrophysicist from Columbia University, as well as co-author of the recent study, said that the most important stage now is to determine what this sort of energy extraction might look like from great distances, such as from Earth. In a statement to Live Science, Camiso said that it's this exact line of questioning that could help us find far away alien civilizations. We have only done the physics in this paper, he said, but I am now working with a colleague of mine to apply this to reality, to look for civilizations, to try to see what kind of signal you would need to look for. NASA found strange radio signal coming from Venus. Even though scientists are always on the lookout for strange or seemingly inexplicable phenomena when venturing through space, when they do encounter odd or mysterious happenings, they are frequently not at all what they expect to find. Recently, NASA's Parker Solar Probe entered the upper atmosphere of Earth's neighbour Venus in order to collect data about the planet, and the probe detected odd radio signals coming from the atmosphere. And while those of us unfamiliar with inner workings of space might immediately jump to the conclusion that these could be signals from an alien race living on the planet, the true meaning is something altogether more exciting, at least for scientists studying space, that is. These radio signals that were detected are naturally occurring within the atmosphere of Venus and indicate that the Parker Solar Probe, flying over 830 kilometers above the planet, had entered the outer atmosphere specifically an upper layer known as the ionosphere. Remarkably, the last time that anyone had been able to detect radio readings from Venus's upper atmosphere was almost 30 years ago, in 1992, which means that this new data will be able to give researchers valuable insight into the changes that have occurred on the planet in the intervening years. This is especially valuable as the unforgiving heat of Venus's atmosphere makes the planet incredibly hard to explore and study. And what did the researchers discover about the planet that was different than in 1992? For starters, the atmosphere appears to be much thinner than the last time that data was gathered. Researchers believe that this is due to the fact that the Sun's magnetic poles mysteriously swap places every 11 years, as a result of the star's solar cycles. Before the magnetic poles switch, the Sun's magnetic field weakens and then flares back to its maximum strength before fading again into the next switch. Because the earlier 1992 measurement was taken during a time in the solar cycle when the magnetic field was close to the maximum, and the current reading is while we are approaching the solar minimum, scientists hypothesize that the ionosphere of Venus is changing with the solar cycle and may be greatly influenced by the Sun's magnetic fields. Although why this is happening is unclear, scientists hope that future data gathered from the planet will help to clue them in. So why is this radio wave analysis of Venus important? Researchers are very interested in discovering more about our sister planet, as the composition and size is remarkably similar to our own. However, there are several marked differences that make Venus totally inhospitable for all possible life forms. Digging into these differences and how Venus was able to become so different from our lively, flourishing planet has always been very interesting to scientists. 
but the aforementioned atmosphere and 462 degrees Celsius temperature makes it incredibly difficult to get close enough to gather data and landing anything on the planet is entirely out of the question. Currently, these brief snippets of information in the form of mysterious natural radio waves are all that researchers have to go on when attempting to unravel the mystery of Venus, and they consider themselves very lucky to have this small amount of information at all. Hopefully, future excursions like the one with the Parker Solar Probe can have similarly favourable results, which can add to the research and knowledge surrounding the mysterious planet Venus. NASA Space Probes discover man-made barrier surrounding Earth. Humankind accidentally protected itself from possibly dangerous cosmic events. An artificial barrier, or bubble as some call it, was found surrounding the Earth. This barrier not only affects weather events in space, but also protects us from dangerous cosmic weather. Human impact on Earth is undeniable, but now we know our technology significantly impacts our outer atmosphere and beyond. As it turns out, the bubble was created by the interaction of man-made technology and space. More specifically, the interaction between high-energy radiation particles in space and man-made radio communications from Earth. The radio waves in question are typically used to communicate with submarines under the ocean's surface and are frequently used in science, engineering and military operations. As these waves work to reach their destination, they can end up reaching out beyond Earth's atmosphere and interacting with external radiation particles in space. Dan Baker from the University of Colorado Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics calls the bubble an impenetrable barrier. This artificial barrier protects Earth from possible dangers like solar flares or coronal mass ejections. All these phenomena can lead to radiation particles entering the atmosphere which could interrupt our electrical grids and radio wave communications. So how was the barrier discovered? In 2012, a mission was launched with the sole purpose of studying the Van Allen radiation belts. Five years later, in 2017, scientists were surprised to instead find a low-frequency barrier that stopped dangerous solar discharges from impacting Earth. The barrier or bubble also happens to line up with the inner edge of the Van Allen belts. This information has scientists suspecting that the radio waves used in submarine communications, VLF waves, repel radiation particles. If we stopped using VLF waves, the radiation belts would move much closer to Earth's atmosphere. Right now, the radiation belts are further away from Earth than they were in 1960. Scientists have been discussing how this finding shows our impact on space. We have, without a doubt, made an impact on the Earth, but this barrier may be one of the best things that we have done for our planet. NASA is monitoring a huge escalating anomaly in Earth's magnetic field. The Earth's magnetic field is an incredibly important aspect to our planet that we do not often talk about not outside of science lessons at least. The magnetic field can help us keep on track, keeping our compass needles pointing north, but it also keeps our planet habitable by deflecting solar winds that otherwise would threaten to strip away the ozone layer. You might not discuss the magnetic field on a regular basis, but it's a truly valuable player in maintaining life as we know it at home here on Earth. Lately, however, something strange has been happening to that valued player with NASA feeling the need to actively monitor and track an anomaly found in the magnetic field, where the magnetic intensity seems to have dropped. There seems to be a huge area in the magnetic field which is notably less magnetic than it should be. An area spanning over South America and Southwest Africa has been impacted thus far. This unusual occurrence, known as the South Atlantic Anomaly, has been toying with the minds of scientists for years now. The American Space Agency has a number of satellites and spacecrafts orbiting in space, many of which orbit Earth. The concern here is that with the magnetic field being weakened, there is a greater exposure to the charged particles headed our way from the Sun. The South Atlantic Anomaly does not impact life on Earth. It will have a significant impact on the spacecrafts in orbit of Earth. As they circle our planet at their low orbit altitudes, these crafts will inevitably pass straight through said anomaly. We believe that during these periods where they pass through, 
the lessened strength of the magnetic field can cause some disturbances in the technology used within these satellites. They can short-circuit, malfunction, and all manner of similar problems can arise where they are struck by high-energy charged protons from the Sun. Typically, if a satellite is hit by one of these particles, then the impact is not usually too severe, usually only what is considered a low-level glitch. However, there is the risk that a large amount of data can be lost when this happens, or even cause permanent damage to crucial elements of the machinery. Between all these possibilities and the increased threat these charged particles propose, it is more necessary than ever for the operators to shut these crafts down before they make it into the area impacted by the South Atlantic anomaly. NASA has begun to keep a closer eye on this, looking at both how best to protect our resources in space and at understanding the science hiding behind this complex phenomenon. Geophysicist Terry Sabaka from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, said, This magnetic field is actually a superposition of fields from many current sources. It is the current assumption that the primary source of this is the molten iron in the Earth's outer core, approximately 3,400 kilometers below the surface of the Earth. This molten iron moves, and that movement produces electrical currents that contribute to our magnetic field. It seems as though the lack of consistency in this movement could be where the anomaly is seemingly arising from. Another contributor could be the African Large Low Shear Velocity Province. This is a huge mass of dense rock, around 2,900 kilometers underneath the continent of Africa. This seems to also disturb the generation of the magnetic field, propelling the drastic weakening. Furthermore, the tilt of Earth on its magnetic axis only heightens the impact of this. The way in which the large low shear velocity province impacts the South Atlantic anomaly was explained further by NASA Goddard geophysicist and mathematician Wei Zhe Quang, who said, The observed SAA can also be interpreted as a consequence of weakening dominance of the dipole field in the region. We still have plenty to attempt to unravel about this strange occurrence, with some suggesting it is dividing and plenty of questions that remain unanswered. Nonetheless, this has been impacting our planet for many years and will continue to do so in the future, though we are yet to see how that will impact our space exploration. As we have continued observation and monitoring, our understanding, actions and predictions will hopefully become more accurate and better informed. Holm 15A Black Hole Whilst it may not be the most massive of black holes, the Holm 15A black hole has a very interesting backstory and is by no means a small black hole. It's essentially the second most massive black hole in the entire universe. Whilst observing the Abel 85 cluster, the Max Planck Institute discovered something truly incredible. The Abel 85 cluster is a collection of around 500 galaxies, but what we're interested in is what lies at the very centre of this cluster of galaxies, the Holm 15A galaxy. Early calculations from scientists indicated that the centre of the Holm 15A was much more dimmer than it perhaps should have been when taking into account the astronomical mass of the stars that are located within the galaxy. All of this indicated that there was something different about Holm 15A's centre. Well, it turned out to be a black hole, but not just any black hole. After attempting to measure the mass of said black hole, the scientists discovered the estimates were much larger than first thought, and in fact, this black hole, now dubbed an ultramassive black hole, has a mass of around 40 billion times that of our Sun. That is a staggering number, and there's no real way to comprehend something of that scale. However, it is fascinating nonetheless. You might be wondering how something as massive as this ultramassive black hole could even exist within a galaxy, given the size of our own. Well, Holm 15a is a giant galaxy known as an elliptical galaxy. An elliptical galaxy is formed when a spiral galaxy such as our own, the Milky Way, merges within another spiral galaxy. It goes further though, as this newly formed elliptical galaxy can then merge with another elliptical galaxy, creating an even bigger galaxy. When these galaxies merge together, the black holes in their centres can also merge, and exactly like the galaxies themselves, create an even larger black hole. 
When these black holes collide and get larger, it can push stars away, forming the darker center. This is how scientists discovered the Holm 15a black hole. Whilst the Holm 15a black hole is the most massive in the nearby universe, being only 700 million light years away from us, the previous entry on this list actually trumps the Holm 15a ultramassive black hole. The Tun 618 quasar ultramassive black hole is more massive but is located 10 billion light years away, so cannot be considered to reside in the nearby universe. The black hole at the center of the Milky Way may be something even more mysterious. If there is one element of space that continues to mystify scientists, it is black holes, and the gaping black hole at the center of the Milky Way, named Sagittarius A star, is perhaps one of the most mysterious of them all. For starters, astronomers have long observed the strange flashing bursts of radio waves, X-rays and gamma rays being emitted in regular intervals from Sagittarius A star. But recent observations of bursts that were up to a hundred times brighter than the regular bursts made researchers believe that even more mysterious elements might be at play, and they were eager to find out more. To accomplish this feat, they began to analyze the 15 years of data collected by NASA's Neil Gayrell's Swift Observatory Satellite, which is dedicated to detecting gamma-ray bursts like those seen coming from Sagittarius A star. The team, made up of international researchers led by Alexis Andres, were looking for any sort of regular patterns or activity that might tell them a little bit about these strange occurrences. Although no clear patterns emerged, they did notice that the frequency increased greatly between the years 2006 and 2008, with a much lower rate of activity the following four years before picking back up again in 2012. However, this second, more recent batch of bursts appears to follow a much different pattern from the first, puzzling researchers even more. As observation is one of the only methods we currently have at our disposal to research such enigmas as black holes, scientists hope that adding this backlog of data to the findings unfolding in present day will help to remove some of the mystery surrounding these central flares. Further study will hopefully be able to tell us exactly what is causing these bursts, be it from passing gaseous clouds, stars, or something else altogether. Co-author of the study, Dr. Jakob van den Eden from the University of Oxford said, how the flares occur exactly remains unclear. It was previously thought that more flares follow after gaseous clouds or stars pass by the black hole but there is no evidence for that yet, and we cannot yet confirm the hypothesis that the magnetic properties of the surrounding gas play a role either. And certainly, when it comes to solving this mystery, having access to databases full of observations taken over the past 15 years helps tremendously as researchers look to the environment around Sagittarius A star for clues that could help them piece together this massive, mysterious puzzle lurking at the center of our galaxy. Green P galaxies may have reheated the universe. The Big Bang is the leading and most widely accepted theory as to how the universe was formed. As we understand it, we experienced a Big Bang, an explosion of sorts, in which the universe was in an incredibly hot and dense state. This was then followed by a period in which the universe cooled down for an approximate billion years. After this cooling period, there was a mysterious reheating that took place. We call this the cosmic reionization. We do not know why or how this reheating occurred, except that in 2016, an international team of scientific researchers believe they may have cracked the code, finding the hidden catalyst that kick-started this heating process. There are galaxies, dubbed green P galaxies, thanks to how they look on the slogan Digital Sky Survey, or SDSS, which are believed to have played a key part in the cosmic reionization. These green P galaxies are responsible for putting new stars and new galaxies into the universe in a manner not too dissimilar than the Big Bang itself. This introduced a lot of new energy into the early cosmos, possibly having had a monumental impact. Despite how long ago this took place, the dwarf galaxies created from this lay undiscovered until 2007. They were only noticed by mistake as volunteers began to study deep space photos and gradually spotted their presence. 
the 2016 hypothesis that these green peak galaxies were behind the cosmic reionization was a consequence of a study from the SDSS, which examined 5,000 green peak galaxies. From these 5,000, just five were selected to be examined and analyzed in more depth via the Hubble Space Telescope, one of which, given the snappy name J0925-1403, was emitting photons that had the capability to ionize hydrogen. Until this particular green pea galaxy was observed, any galaxies that had been leaking photons were at a rate so slow that they were easily absorbed by the surrounding gas and dust. J0925-1403, however, was ejecting photons at such a high volume and rate that the impact was far more significant. The explanation of hydrogen ionization is in keeping with the current assumptions and facts we have surrounding this reheating. Already the electrons and protons splitting apart despite being previously joined within hydrogen atoms. This would provide a new burst of energy, like what we assume would be needed. The link between cosmic reionization and these green peak galaxies is useful as it tells us where we need to be looking to find out further information. It gives us a starting point to search further into the area. It is hoped that the James Webb Space Telescope would provide some further information once it is fully configured. We may live in a massive cosmic void. In 2013, the University of Wisconsin-Madison's astronomer Amy Barger and her student Ryan Keegan made an interesting discovery. They found that the density of our nearby universe is lower than that of other parts. The density of the universe is largely uniform. However, if you break the universe up into smaller parts, it begins to look a lot like a block of Swiss cheese. These smaller parts have certain sections that are very densely packed and others that are more sparsely populated. Research suggests that Earth sits squarely in one of these barer sections, hence the suggestion that if the universe is a big block of Swiss cheese, Earth sits in one of its holes. In fact, one of Amy Barger's students, Ben Hoscheit, presented new research at a meeting of the American Astronomical Society. Hoshite looked at disparities in measures of the Hubble constant, the number we use to describe the rate at which the universe is growing. Since it describes the condition of our universe, Hubble's constant is expected to stay the same throughout the universe. However, Hoshite found an important difference. To get a local measurement, he found Hubble's constant by analyzing the movement of relatively close type 1a supernovas. To get a cosmic measurement, he used cosmic microwave background radiation, leftovers from the Big Bang. Hoshite believes that the massive void theory, also known as the Swiss cheese theory, may be to blame for the disparity in Hubble's constant, saying the constant is higher using the supernova method. This is in accordance with how we would expect a void to affect the Hubble constant. Gravity from higher density areas is pulling things out of the void at a faster rate than we would otherwise expect. Surprisingly, the astronomical research community seems to be in agreement on the massive void theory. Researchers believe that this particular void is seven times bigger than any other void they have ever measured, and our galaxy is a few hundred million light-years away from the void's center. Surely, such findings serve to remind us once again how minuscule we are in the context of the universe. Even so, this relatively new theory brings us a step closer to understanding how our universe is built, structured and designed, and it may help us solve other mysteries in the future. Galaxy discovered on the edge of the universe, Abel 2744Y1 The discovery of a brand new galaxy is always intriguing. Able 2744Y1 is one such galaxy which lies on the very edge of our observable universe. This galaxy is an estimated 50 times smaller than our own Milky Way at about 2,300 light-years in width. The shocking element is that despite its tiny size, it produces 10 times the number of stars than our Milky Way does. It also has a red shift of 8. Red shift measures a galaxy's wavelength due to the universe's expansion. Until now, most galaxies have had a wavelength redshift of 7. 
this proving it is on the very edge of our understanding. The galaxy was discovered using NASA's Spitzer and Hubble Space Telescopes, with the use of special gravitational lenses made specifically to help astronomers see further into outer space and detect distant galaxies behind the Able 2744 galaxy cluster by magnifying the light from behind those galaxies. The Able 2744Y1 finding was part of the Frontier Field program established by NASA. The program was created with seeking further galaxies in mind and really reaching as far as we can possibly go in terms of seeing even further out of the universe to try and witness more of the early cosmos. It's hoped that six galaxy clusters in total will be analysed under the Frontier Fields program. According to Dr Nicholas Laporte from the Instituto de Astrophysica de Canarias, we expected to find very distant galaxies close to the cluster core, where the light amplification is maximum. However, this galaxy is very close to the edge of the Hubble image where the light is not strongly amplified. We are really lucky that we could find it in the small field of view of Hubble. In a statement, fellow astronomers commented, The long exposure image of the cluster Able 2744 is the deepest one obtained so far of a cluster of galaxies and is comparable to the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. This is, without a shred of a doubt, the most primordial galaxy we have ever seen. Its discovery itself is a blessing to researchers as it gives immense insight into the early universe and how galaxies formed. It's so ancient that the light from it that reaches the Earth is from long-gone stars that faded 13 billion years ago. Our modern image of Abel 2744Y1 reflects how it looked at the time of the early universe when it was an estimated 650 million years old. This is an amazing facet and lets us analyse much of our universe's past, especially given that the current theory for the age of the universe is about 13.8 billion years. Despite being a primordial galaxy, the pace at which it is still creating new stars mimics the pace of early universe galaxies, which are believed to have done much of the same. Nevertheless, it implies that this galaxy never slowed its star production even billions of years later and is still going strong. The Spitzer telescope used the electromagnetic spectrum to provide further insight into the galaxy from the infrared data collected using the Hubble Space Telescope. The Chandra Observatory was also used by scientists to further their research. Recording its X-ray wavelengths to find out as much as they can about Able 2744Y1. NASA's Spitzer Science Center astronomer Jason Saras claims just a handful of galaxies at these great distances are known. The Frontier Fields program is already working to find more of these distant, faint galaxies. This is a preview of what's to come. Saturn radio signal puzzles astronomers. Astronomers are feeling a little baffled by the signals they are getting from Saturn. No, this is not angsty dating we are talking about, it's inconsistent radio signals. The northern and southern hemispheres of Saturn are sending natural radio wave signals that differ from one another. Not only that, but over time, Saturn's radio signals, which are regulated by the planet's rotation, change quite dramatically as time passes. This is possibly synchronized with the seasons of Saturn. Fellow gas giant Jupiter gave scientists the false confidence that they understood the radio wave patterns of other gas giants. Saturn is definitely proving them wrong because its radio wave signals are so different. Saturn kilometric radiation, or SKR, are the natural radio waves emitted by Saturn. They cannot be heard by the human ear, but when converted to the audio range we can hear, they sound like short bursts of a spinning air raid siren. But this noise varies with each rotation of the planet. Jupiter's steady radio wave pattern gave scientists the opportunity to measure its rotation rate. Saturn, on the other hand, is acting like an unpredictable toddler when it comes to handing over data that will allow its rotation rate to be measured. Other spacecraft, such as NASA's European Space Agency Ulysses Probe and Cassini, collected data that found the radio burst varied by seconds to minutes. In fact, Cassini, which stayed in Saturn's orbit from 2008 to 2017, observed that the radio emissions were in fact a duet and not solo emissions. But the two players in the duet are out of sync. The North Pole radio emissions have a repeat pattern of 10.6 hours, 
while the radio waves emitted from the South Pole repeat every 10.8 hours. However, even these times are not consistent, and it was shown that over time, Saturn's southern time period made a steady decrease while the northern time increased. Last March, the two came together at approximately 10.67 hours. Since the time of convergence, the southern SKR emissions have continued to decrease, and the northern ones have carried on increasing. The oldest black hole in the universe Many celestial bodies in the universe are old, but when scientists in 2017 realised they had found what could be one of the oldest black holes in the universe, they were understandably ecstatic. The black hole, ULAS J1342-0928, has a name just as big as its size. Astronomers were flabbergasted to find that the black hole, located millions of light years away, had a mass that's more than 800 million times larger than that of our Sun. Even more amazingly, the gigantic black hole reached this mass when the universe was only at 5% of its current age. The gargantuan ULAS black hole first came into creation a mere 690 million years after the Big Bang, a very short time in the relative time of the universe. The discovery of such a massive celestial body may teach us more about black holes and their massive sizes. This may shine a light on how the conditions of the early universe changed to what they currently are today. The black hole is also paired with a nearby quasar, and the bright display of light also takes a new record for the furthest discovered quasar. The record used to belong to ULAS J1120-0641, which is a distant 13.04 billion light-years from us, and came into existence around 750 million years after the Big Bang. It's believed that at the centre of most, if not all, galaxies lies a supermassive black hole. These black holes are much larger than their standard-sized namesakes, and can reach anywhere from millions to billion times the mass of our Sun. Studies in the past have developed the idea that these massive space vacuums create huge displays of light as they devour local stars and other matter. These events are believed to create what we know as quasars, which are some of the brightest objects in the known universe. Because of their incredible brightness, researchers and astronomers are able to pick up and detect quasar activity from some of the farthest points in the known universe, meaning they are some of the most distant objects we know that exist. Quasars that are further away are much older in age, and the older and further a quasar is, the longer it takes for the light to travel to Earth. The Hungry Blob at the Edge of the Universe Astronomers have some rather fantastic and somewhat amusing names for their projects, discoveries and equipment. Whether you are giggling at the European Southern Observatory's VLT, that's Very Large Telescope, or impressed at the naming of TESS, NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, there is about to be another astronomical object's name that will stick in your head. A blob. The Very Hungry Blob. Quite unlike the Very Hungry Caterpillar was discovered in 2009, though it has been sitting in our universe for much longer. So, while the Very Hungry Blob is a great name, the real name is the Lyman Alpha Blob, and we have a lot of questions about exactly what it is. Astronomer Masami Uchi, working in the observatories of the Carnegie Institution for Science in Pasadena, California, was the lead researcher of the team who wound up spotting and pinpointing the blob. Uchi and his team believe that the blobs that have been seen are a series of small galaxies, merging together to form one larger, far bigger galaxy. This is not the only suggestion going around, however. Some have suggested that cold gas moving into the galaxy is essentially feeding it, allowing it to grow, and other astronomers have suggested that the glowing blob is a cloud of gas rising in temperature as a result of a nearby supermassive black hole. What makes this observation all the more interesting is how far it is from Earth. At the time of discovery, it was the fourth most distant object we had ever observed. This is a staggering 12.9 billion light-years away. Given how long it takes light to travel, our observations are essentially looking back in time, as by the time we are observing this blob, it will have aged a great deal and certainly will not look like this anymore. 
In fact, this blob is about 12.9 billion years old, bringing us right back to just after the formation of the universe, which is estimated to be between 13 billion and 14 billion years old. Uchi and the research team managed to see by looking at the infrared light that was coming from space. This is a wavelength outside of the visible light spectrum and can be described as feeling like heat. This strange blob clocks in at a diameter half the size of our own Milky Way. So if it is a larger galaxy forming, it was still small in size when we made these observations. However, scientists do not anticipate it remaining small for too long. Predictions and estimations all seem to indicate that this blob is a small galaxy having a growth spurt. It had the equivalent of 40 billion suns inside it when it was first observed. Though could easily have a great deal more now, absorbing and taking in more stars as it goes. A strange blob dating back to the start of the universe is a peculiar discovery, though it goes to show just how much we are waiting to find. Scientists discover a rare asteroid that will follow Earth in orbit for the next 4,000 years. There are millions, if not billions, of asteroids potentially whizzing around in space. Scientists who discover these travelling lumps of rock have plenty of examples to study and learn from. But it is not every day that something truly special shows up. In this case, it is what's known as an Earth Trojan asteroid which is a small piece of space rock that has the same orbit as Earth. A study only recently published announced that researchers had proven the asteroid's existence and also stated that the rock will be following Earth's orbit for at least another several thousand years. A team of astronomers from the Institute of Cosmos Sciences of the University of Barcelona proudly declared their discovery of 2020 XL5, the second Earth Trojan ever confirmed, after 10 years of tireless searching, 2020 XL5 is believed to be around 0.7 miles in diameter. For context, the first Earth Trojan 2010 TK7 was 0.2 miles in diameter. The size is important in Earth Trojan asteroids, as the sweet spot allows the rock to balance within Earth's orbit around the Sun. Trojan asteroids are nothing new. For decades, we have been aware of Trojans on Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune, though Earth ones have proven to be more elusive. There have been many previous attempts to find Earth Trojans. Tony Santana Ross, one of the authors of the new publication, said to press, all the dedicated efforts had so far failed to discover any new members of this population. Spotting Earth Trojans is surprisingly difficult. Because of their distance to the Sun, the window of opportunity to spot them is very small. It is only around sunrise that we can try to catch a glimpse of them. However, scientists have got around this by utilizing huge telescopes in Arizona and Cerro Pachon in Chile to photograph the asteroids. Scientists are interested in Trojans mostly due to their age, as many of them were around during the earliest stages of the solar system. They are effectively time capsules of the conditions for that time. In fact, NASA's Lucy mission, which launched in October 2021, is set to visit eight different Trojan asteroids in the next 12 years. Mars is humming The InSight rover landed on Mars in November 2018, landing near the equator of the Red Planet. NASA's robot has been measuring the planet's seismic activity and conducting tests on its geographic qualities. Its mission is to understand and learn about the geology of rocky planets to observe their evolution and gain some more understanding about Earth's history and potential future. Scientists cannot get enough data on rocky planets just from Earth, they need to gather information from others. InSight landed in the Elysium Planitia, a small crater located on a volcanic plain. This location is often caught in wind and dust storms. The data it has gathered so far suggests that the seismic activity and magnetic field on Mars are much stronger than the researchers estimated, about 10 times more. While collecting data, the rover recorded a strange humming sound that researchers and experts have not been able to concretely identify the cause of. They have their speculations, though, and suggest it is caused by both seismic movement below the surface as well as the wind above it. When combined together, these two forces create a strange sound. 
the hum actually cannot be heard by humans. It falls outside our frequency range but gets picked up on readings by the robot and its machines. So, any future human visitors will not be able to hear Mars humming. The researchers are excited at finding so many similarities between Mars and Earth. The infrasound, sound we can't hear, and the atmospheric turbulence are encouraging to their studies on finding out Mars's history and seeing what its timeline looks like compared to ours. Interestingly enough, Earth also has a faint infrasound humming to it. There have been reports of a hum that have been a hot debate for many years, even outside the astronomy community. Scientists can't really explain it, but many people try to blame it for certain diseases and health issues. There have been many locations across Earth that have complained of some sort of noise pollution and mysterious humming sounds. Now, InSight has identified a similar one on Mars. The robot was using a seismometer to measure the quakes underneath the planet. Since its first reading, it has measured over 400 quakes. It even managed to find fault lines on Mars, which confirms the constant seismic activity found. A few of the quakes have registered at 3 to 4 magnitudes, but most of them were so small that the machines and scientists were unable to detect their origin. Researchers also found that there are more quakes on Mars when the planet gets cold. When it cools down, it contracts, which forces the brittle layers near the surface to break in a way to accommodate their positioning. This breaking is causing stress on the surface that results in quakes. There are still many mysteries that the InSight researchers are excited about delving into, like how they recorded some type of activity at Mars's depth. They believe there might even be hot magma still at its core. They will continue to measure the activity and gather as much knowledge about Mars's geological history as possible. Astronomers discover hidden trove of massive black holes. Sometimes we can look at something time and time again, still never noticing every detail. Whether it is a missed clue in your favorite film or a seemingly new brushstroke in a painting, this is something each one of us has experienced. Well, it appears that the scientific world is no exception. A research team led by those at the University of North Carolina has uncovered a whole host of massive black holes in dwarf galaxies, despite us looking in the areas previously. These massive black holes have been looked past over and over, but now that we know that they are there, they could have a huge potential to help us figure out the details behind the supermassive black hole in the center of the Milky Way. Our galaxy takes the form of a giant spiral, meaning, as our current understanding has us believe, it's made up of lots of small dwarf galaxies and they're merging together. One example of this is the Magellanic Clouds. These clouds are irregular galaxies that appear as an illuminated patch in the sky. They are seen in the south and they are understood to be dwarf galaxies that will eventually become part of the Milky Way. When a new dwarf galaxy enters our galaxy, there is the potential that it brings along with it a massive black hole at its center. It's currently thought that an inevitable question of when, rather than if, this massive black hole will be absorbed by the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. While we acknowledge that this is a possibility, in reality, we do not know how often dwarf galaxies contain massive black holes. This is a glaring gap in our current knowledge, as we know very little about how black holes and galaxies grow, develop, and interact with one another. This new research, published in the Astrophysical Journal, helps us to connect the dots as we uncover the black holes we simply had not seen before. Lead author of the study, Mungta Polymera, said, This result really blew my mind because these black holes were previously hiding in plain sight. It can be a fairly difficult process to detect black holes, evidenced by us repeatedly glossing over them. Usually, we can find them when they take in gas, as this results in them growing and makes them glow. Professor Sheila Kanapan, the co-author of the study, likened black holes to fireflies, in that we can only see them when they are lit up. So, if the black holes are not actively growing, then we do not know how many are truly there. Adding to this confusion is that the high energy radiation characteristic of growing black holes is not exclusively a feature of them alone. 
new stars can be seen to have the same high energy radiation. The research team realized that they could test where these signals were coming from with a different number of tests, allowing us to conclude if it is a young star being formed or a black hole growing that is being observed. So far, this research seems very promising, with a new acknowledgement that there is sometimes more to the picture than what we can see. The theories we currently hold are growing and expanding in size, allowing us to deepen our understanding and more research will eventually be conducted, hopefully providing further evidence towards what we think we already know. Since the dawn of space exploration, numerous astronauts have claimed to have encountered unidentified objects while in space. Many of these sightings have been dismissed by skeptics as mere hallucinations or reflections of light, but others remain unexplained and have left some wondering if there is more to the universe than we currently understand. One of the most famous of these encounters occurred during the Apollo 11 mission in 1969 when astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong reported seeing a strange glowing object following them as they made their way to the moon. The object appeared to be in a fixed position relative to the spacecraft, leading some to speculate that it may have been an advanced craft. Another notable encounter occurred when astronaut James McDivitt reported seeing a cylindrical object that he could not identify. The object appeared to be rotating and emitting a high-pitched sound leading McDivitt to speculate that it may have been a spacecraft of some kind. Story Musgrave is a retired NASA astronaut who has made six spaceflights during his career. However, during one of those missions, he had a strange encounter that he could not explain. In 1996, Musgrave was on board the Space Shuttle Columbia on the STS-80 mission when he saw a mysterious object in space that he described as a snake. The incident occurred during a 15-day mission when Columbia was orbiting the Earth at an altitude of about 190 miles. Musgrave, who was a payload specialist on the mission, was operating a video camera to film a tether experiment in which a 12-mile-long cable was extended from the shuttle to test the idea of using tethers to generate electricity in space. As Musgrave was filming the experiment, he noticed a strange object moving across the frame. At first, he thought it was a reflection or a lens flare, but as he zoomed in on the object, he realized it was a long, thin, serpentine object with what appeared to be lights on it. Musgrave estimated that the object was about 10 to 30 feet long and said that it appeared to be moving independently of the shuttle and the tether. He described the object as a giant, snake-like creature that was moving deliberately through space. The encounter lasted for about 10 minutes, during which time Musgrave and his crewmates tried to determine what the object was. They ruled out the possibility that it was a reflection or a lens flare, and also ruled out the possibility that it was a piece of debris or space junk, since it was moving too deliberately and too slowly. They also ruled out the possibility that it was an animal or a bird, since it was moving through the vacuum of space. The incident was captured on video, and the footage has been analysed by researchers, who have suggested that the object could be an advanced craft. However, NASA officials have said that the object was probably a piece of debris or space junk and that Musgrave and his crewmates misidentified it. Regardless of what the object actually was, Musgrave's encounter has remained one of the most intriguing and mysterious sightings ever reported by an astronaut. It is a reminder that there are still many unexplained phenomena in space and that the universe is full of mysteries that we have yet to unravel. In 2020, Russian cosmonaut Ivan Wagner captured footage of an unidentified object from the International Space Station. The video showed a fast-moving object with a distinct shape and glowing lights passing over the Earth's atmosphere. The footage quickly gained attention from enthusiasts and skeptics alike, sparking discussions about the existence of extraterrestrial life and the possibility of advanced technologies beyond human comprehension. The object spotted by Wagner is not the first reported sighting from space. NASA astronauts have also reported seeing objects that they could not explain while on missions. The subject of mysterious aircrafts in space has long been a topic of interest and debate among the scientific community and the general public. Despite the compelling nature of the Wagner footage, skeptics argue that the object could have been a satellite, a piece of space debris, or a natural phenomenon such as a meteor. However, 
Some experts have pointed out that the object appears to have maneuvered in a way that suggests it was not simply a random piece of space debris, also noting that it hovered motionless for several minutes without moving. The Wagner sighting adds to the growing body of evidence that suggests the possibility of extraterrestrial life and advanced technologies beyond human understanding. While the scientific community has yet to provide definitive proof of such phenomena, the fascination and intrigue surrounding the topic continue to capture the public's imagination. As space exploration and technology continue to advance, it is likely that further sightings and evidence will emerge, fueling ongoing discussions and debates about the existence of extraterrestrial life and advanced civilizations. The United States National Aeronautics and Space Administration has long been a source of interest for enthusiasts. Many have wondered whether NASA has investigated sightings or encountered unexplained aerial phenomena in their missions. NASA has always maintained that it is a scientific organization focused on space exploration and has not made any formal statement on the existence of extraterrestrial life or mysterious aircrafts. However, there have been reports of NASA astronauts and officials discussing sightings of strange aircrafts and unexplained aerial phenomena. In more recent years, NASA astronauts have reported seeing unusual lights and objects while in space. In 2019, various strange objects were allegedly detected outside the International Space Station, with one user describing them as large, glowing objects that didn't match anything that was close by. Despite these reports, NASA has maintained that there is no evidence of extraterrestrial life or advanced aircrafts. While NASA has not made any formal statement on whether they have investigated sightings or unexplained aerial phenomena, some former NASA employees have spoken out about their experiences. In 2009, astronaut Dr. Edgar Mitchell, who was part of the Apollo 14 mission, spoke about his belief in extraterrestrial life and the existence of a government cover-up. He claimed that NASA had been covering up evidence of advanced beings visiting Earth and said that they have been doing this for decades. As of right now, while NASA has not made any official statements on mysterious aircrafts or unexplained aerial phenomena, there have been reports of sightings and experiences by astronauts and officials. The organization's focus on scientific research and space exploration may limit its willingness to publicly discuss such topics, but the public's interest in the possibility of advanced life and aircrafts continues to be a topic of debate and fascination. One of the most fascinating questions that have intrigued scientists, astronomers, and the general public for decades is the possibility of the existence of intelligent extraterrestrial life. With billions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars, many of which are sun-like, it seems statistically likely that some of them could host life. However, despite decades of searching and studying the universe, we have yet to find concrete evidence of the existence of aliens. So, why have we seen no sign of aliens? One possible answer is that the universe is too vast and the distances between stars and planets are too great for us to make contact with aliens. The nearest star system to our own, Alpha Centauri, is more than four light years away. This means that it would take us over four years to travel there at the speed of light. Furthermore, even if we did detect signals from an alien civilization, it would still take years for us to communicate with them assuming they could receive and send signals at a similar speed. Another possibility is that we have not been looking in the right place. Our search for extraterrestrial life has primarily focused on planets that are similar to Earth, with the assumption that life could only exist in conditions that are similar to those on our planet. However, this assumption may be too narrow, and life could exist in environments that we have not considered, such as underground oceans, methane seas, or extreme temperatures. Additionally, it is possible that we have already received signals from extraterrestrial civilizations, but we have not recognized them. In 1977, the famous WOW signal was detected by astronomers at The Ohio State University, but it has not been detected since. While there are various theories about the origin of the signal, including that it was a transmission from aliens, it remains a mystery. Another possible reason why we have not seen any signs of aliens is that they are simply not interested in communicating with us. It is possible that they have evolved beyond the need for communication or that they do not see us as a threat or a valuable enough civilization to interact with. Alternatively, 
it is possible that they are intentionally avoiding us to prevent interference in our development or to maintain the secrecy of their existence. As of right now, the absence of concrete evidence of the existence of aliens remains one of the greatest mysteries in science. While we have not found any definitive proof of the existence of extraterrestrial life, the possibility of its existence remains tantalizingly real. Whether we will ever make contact with aliens or not is still unknown, but the search for extraterrestrial life continues to captivate our imaginations and inspire scientists to explore the universe further. The universe is vast and has countless galaxies, each containing an enormous number of stars, planets, and other celestial objects. As a result, it is difficult to estimate the exact number of planets in the universe. However, scientists have been able to make rough estimates based on current knowledge and data. The Milky Way galaxy, which is the home of our solar system, is estimated to contain between 100 billion and 400 billion planets. Scientists have already discovered thousands of planets outside our solar system using telescopes and other detection methods. Beyond the Milky Way galaxy, there are billions of other galaxies, each containing an estimated number of stars and planets. This suggests that there are potentially trillions of planets in the observable universe. It is worth noting that while there may be an enormous number of planets in the universe, it is also important to consider the conditions required for life to exist. For example, a planet must be in the habitable zone of its star, which is the region where conditions are favorable for liquid water to exist. Additionally, the planet must have the right atmosphere, temperature and other conditions that are necessary for life to exist. While we may not know the exact number of planets in the universe, it is clear that there are many possibilities for discovering new planets and expanding our understanding of the cosmos. With advances in technology and exploration, it is likely that we will continue to uncover new information about the planets in the universe and their potential for harboring life. The universe is vast, with countless stars, planets and other celestial bodies. One of the most significant structures in the universe is the galaxy, which is a collection of billions of stars held together by gravity. Galaxies come in different shapes and sizes, and scientists estimate that there are billions of them in the universe. But just how many galaxies are there? In 2016, a study conducted by an international team of astronomers estimated that there are roughly two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. The observable universe is the portion of the universe that we can see from Earth, which is limited by the speed of light and the age of the universe. This estimate was based on data collected by the Hubble Space Telescope and other observatories, which have been used to survey large portions of the sky and count the number of galaxies present. While the number of galaxies in the observable universe is staggering, it is important to note that this estimate only accounts for a small fraction of the entire universe. The universe is believed to be much larger than the observable universe, and it is likely that there are many more galaxies beyond our current reach. Despite the vast number of galaxies in the universe, many of them are too far away to be observed directly. Scientists have developed various techniques to study galaxies indirectly, such as analyzing their light spectra or studying the gravitational lensing effects they produce. By studying galaxies, scientists hope to better understand the formation and evolution of the universe, as well as the processes that drive the formation and evolution of individual galaxies. As of right now, while we may never know exactly how many galaxies exist in the universe, current estimates suggest that there are at least two trillion in the observable universe alone. As technology and techniques continue to improve, it is likely that we will continue to discover new galaxies and gain a better understanding of the vast and complex universe we live in. The Heartbeat Signal in December of 2019, astronomers discovered what is being described as a strange and persistent radio signal evidently coming from a galaxy several billion light-years away from Earth. Although they had detected many of these radio frequencies with various lengths and at various times, this one was different. It was consistent, repetitive, and unlike anything found before. Not only was the heartbeat signal consistent and repetitive, it was also longer than any detected before. Scientists recorded that it lasted about 3 seconds and repeated in 0.02 second intervals. 
Labelled FRB 20191221A, these fast radio bursts are unlike any of the others. It's believed that this signal and signals detected from newer and improved technologies and telescopes can provide access to parts of the universe that have not been reached yet. Scientists, astronomers and researchers from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and McGill University in Canada have utilized the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment to detect these signals, which are called fast radio bursts. It's an interferometric radio telescope that is sensitive to FRBs and is therefore used to track and detect their occurrences in the sky. The first time an FRB was ever discovered was about 15 years ago in 2007. Since then, many radio signals have been detected, but unlike this heartbeat-like signal, they were very random and inconsistent. These FRBs were flashes, short and scattered, and coming from unknown sources an extremely long distance away. The closest an FRB ever came to being periodic was a signal discovered to repeat every 16 days. And still, these fast radio bursts were not very consistent. The source of these FRBs is unknown, meaning scientists can only postulate the origins of these signals. It's believed that FRBs may be emanating from radio pulsars or magnetars, neutron stars that are the dense and rapidly spinning cores of what were once giant stars that have since collapsed. CHIME has detected many different kinds of FRBs with varying properties and surroundings. Some live inside turbulent clouds and some seem to be in clean environments. Other than this information, not much else is known about where these FRBs come from and all that is known of the origins of this new heartbeat signal is that it appears to be coming from a source that is surrounded by plasma clouds. This discovery is significant because it not only tells us that there is much more to learn about the universe than we know, but because it can be an indicator of what else is happening beyond our world. Exoplanet 2M0437b We have so many fantastic creations here on Earth that it can be difficult to remember everything else that is out there. Scientists have so much to investigate and research beyond our planet that it can be impossible for the general public to know what research to follow. It is always exciting, however, when new planets are discovered in different galaxies and solar systems. These are exoplanets and researchers hope their study can help us understand more about the origins of the universe, how Earth formed, and if other planets could support life the same way Earth can. Of course, a key aspect to the study of exoplanets is learning how they form and studying their early development, though this is easier said than done. One exoplanet first discovered in 2018, 2M0437b, is thought to be incredibly young, as far as planets go, giving great opportunities for researchers to probe a little further into its origins. This exoplanet is estimated to be just a few million years old. By comparison, our solar system's planets are 4.5 billion years old. The young age of this exoplanet has led scientists to speculate that this is still as hot as lava, with the high surface temperature being put down to its recent formation and the energy that was released during this process. The baby exoplanet was spotted using the Subaru telescope when it managed to capture a stunning shot of the planet reflected in its star's light. The Subaru telescope is based in Hawaii, at the summit of the Mauna Kea volcano, but is operated from Japan by the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. Some initial research showed that 2M0437b is very large, multiple Jupiters in size in fact, as well as revealing the sky-high temperatures of the planet. Professionals have noted that being able to directly observe the planet provides us several opportunities, meaning we can look at the composition, helping us see where and how it formed, as well as observing the gravitational orbital tongues on the parent stars. There is plenty more research opportunities waiting to be explored. The Closest Known Black Hole to Earth if you know anything about space, you probably have some idea of what a black hole is. What you might not know about is the newest discovery astronomers have made about the distance of the nearest black hole to the Earth. When massive stars, some of which are roughly ten times the mass of our Sun, near the end of their lifespans, 
a powerful supernova explosion occurs, causing them to collapse. What is left behind in the aftermath of these collapses is a tightly packed small space containing the mass of at least several suns and a black hole. Because there is no light in these areas, they cannot be observed directly. Rather, black holes are detected by the gravitational pull that drags in all nearby materials, meanwhile emitting X-rays that then signify their existence to scientists and astronomers. This particular black hole was dormant, and so, even though such black holes are far more common than active ones, it was even harder to detect because they no longer have a strong gravitational power. It's not just the closest found so far, it's also huge. It's about 10 times as massive as our Sun, and is located only 1600 light years away from the Earth, which is not much in terms of cosmic scale. Though astronomers have spotted a mere 20 black holes in the Milky Way galaxy to date, it's estimated that there could be more than 100 million more lurking around the galaxy, with sizes about 5 to 10 times more massive than the Sun. Because of this, it's quite possible that the current closest black hole will not hold that title forever. Karim Al-Badri, an astrophysicist at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, said that because there are so many yet-to-be-discovered black holes, finding this one suggests there are a bunch more to be found. And so there is a high possibility that those will be even closer than this one. For now, however, this is the closest researchers have been able to find, which is still a fantastic discovery. Compared to the previous black hole that maintained the closest black hole to Earth title, this one is three times closer to Earth. It also has a nearby star that is about the same size as our Sun. And even more interestingly, the black hole and its Sun are roughly the same distance from each other as our Sun and the Earth. Researchers were confused as to how it was possible that the remaining star was not consumed when its partner star collapsed, faded, and formed the black hole that has now been discovered. Black holes have always been very interesting and points of interest to those who study it, as well as people who are curious about outer space. Mysterious kick just after the Big Bang may have created dark matter. Scientists believe that matter and antimatter should be balanced. They are counterparts, and as most materials that are opposites, they ought to cancel each other out on contact. All the universe's matter should have been destroyed as soon as it came into existence as a result of touching with antimatter. But, as we know, that's not the case, and there is a known imbalance in space when it comes to matter and antimatter. Scientists now theorize that when the universe was in its infancy, a kick was responsible for producing far more matter than antimatter. It's possible that this imbalance between them made dark matter. Dark matter has a pull on everything, yet it does not interact with anything, even light. All we know is it exists and makes up 80% of our cosmos. But how it works, how it came to be, and what it does is still a mystery. And yet, we also know that regular matter has nothing in common with dark matter, which is, as of now, outside our understanding of physics. It is believed that for a short while, antimatter and matter were balanced, but something caused that balance to shift and it filled the universe with matter. Scientists do not know when this happened, if it even did. It is now thought that perhaps the unbalance of matter and antimatter is connected to the birth of dark matter. It would make sense for these processes to be connected, but without proof, one can only speculate and study the situation. A study by Arxiv from 2020 alleges that space relies on a baryon number symmetry. Baryons are composed of quarks, protons and neutrons, and it claims that all baryons must be equal in interaction with baryons possessing antiquarks. If this paper is accepted by peers, it will suggest that symmetry is an aspect of almost all things in space, yet it suggests that in the early cosmos, the kick specifically pushed antimatter and matter out of proportion. In physics, if symmetry is shattered, it creates what is called a Goldstone boson. So if the theory is correct, it adds evidence to the idea that dark matter is a product of the baryon number of matters breaking. The balance between dark matter and matter then suggests they are indeed related. But this theorized model of understanding dark matter does not help with the split between dark and normal matter. 80% dark matter and 20% matter. 
they are in rough balance, and it's thought that it's because they share their origins. This unknown origin or kick is yet to be theorized, and for now is being held as a placeholder. Mysterious Radio Signal Proxima Centauri Scientists have searched for alien life in outer space for decades, but recently they have found something unexpected. From the area assumed to be close to Proxima Centauri, the star closest to our Sun and in the Alpha Centauri solar system. Proxima is a red star that lies 4.2 light years away. Proxima is orbited by two known planets. Although they have yet to be properly analyzed, it's believed one could host life as it has a similarly rocky terrain to our own Earth. Australia's Parkes Observatory has been used to gain insight into Proxima Centauri. The radio signal, named BLC-1, was captured in the spring of 2019. Graduate student Sophia Sheikh, who is one of the signal's analysts, states, It's pretty expected that every now and then you'll see something weird. But this is interesting because it's something that's weird that we're having to think about the next steps. Sheikh and her team members theorize that the signal seems human but has been described by some scientists as a possible breakthrough in terms of alien investigation. A follow-up analysis of the signal is in the works, with researchers trying to investigate as much as they can to determine every crevice of what this could mean. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence is the astronomical project of searching the skies for signs of alien life and communication. The signal's appearance has placed a renewed interest in the investigation despite scientists warning the public and alien enthusiasts not to get too excited. It's otherwise known as Project Breakthrough Listen. Andrew Simeon, the project's primary investigator, has said, There's a lot of talk about sensationalism in SETI. The reason we're so excited about SETI and why we dedicate our careers to it is the same reason why the public gets so excited about it. It's aliens. It's awesome. The first alien communication project began in 1960 by Frank Drake with Project Ozma. Radio waves pass through space all the time, but it's thought that alien communication might resemble our own radio broadcasts or, as the BLC-1, be a radio signal of unusual means. This does mean, however, that aliens will likely communicate within limited frequencies that might be difficult for us to capture. Sheikh has stated, only human technology seems to produce signals like that. Our Wi-Fi, our cell towers, our GPS, our satellite radio. All of this looks exactly like the signals that we're searching for, which makes it very hard to tell if something is from space or from human-generated technology. It's possible that BLC-1 comes from an undiscovered natural satellite instead of from a planet. It could be a blip in the system or a mistake in our technology or a misinformed reading. Many things can interfere with the search for cosmic radio frequencies, so scientists need to figure out if this was truly an outer space signal or one of our own. Though, notably, it has passed many tests that rule out it being an Earth-based signal. The WOW signal from 1977 comes to mind. Extremely similar to BLC-1, the WOW signal was when intense radio waves were recorded by the Ohio State University Radio Observatory. The source of the WOW signal has never been detected and has not happened since, leaving yet another mystery in its wake. Sheikh confirms, Our algorithm is very optimistic about what might be alien technology. Unfortunately, when they checked Proxima Centauri again, they were unable to detect anything out of the norm. But astronomers are determined to keep searching both Proxima Centauri and surrounding planets and solar systems in hopes of tracking down the signal source. Enceladus may have ocean currents like we see around Antarctica. At first glance, pictures of Saturn's moon Enceladus reveals a topography not unlike a pile of wrinkled bedsheets. The icy white surface of the lunar satellite is unlike our own earthy one because of the apparent lack of pitted, mottled craters caused by passing space debris. Instead, Enceladus is crisscrossed with jagged, wrinkle-like structures that reveal the icy landscape of the moon that harbors a similarity with our own home planet, a vast, salty ocean. 
Unlike our own seven seas, however, Enceladus has one globe-spanning and entirely subsurface ocean. Furthermore, this space ocean is warmer towards the core of the planet and colder near its surface, as its temperature is regulated by the planet's icy surface. It is also far, far deeper than Earth's oceans, at over 30 kilometers deep as opposed to our three and a half kilometer deep seas. But while there are many differences, there are a few key similarities, among them their shared salinities and currents. Earthbound scientists have studied these currents in the only environment that most closely mimics Enceladus, that's Antarctica. Due to the large but rapidly declining polar ice caps that cover the Southern Ocean, the water temperatures are similarly regulated. The currents in Antarctica are largely caused by and manipulated by wind and lunar gravity, but they are also influenced by varying degrees of salinity, just as they are on Enceladus. These space currents are propelled around due to the changing levels of density, which are influenced by the amount of salt in the water. As salt water melts near Enceladus's north and south poles, the weight of the water changes and rises and falls accordingly, creating currents. So why are these temperatures and currents and varying levels of salinity on a distant Saturn-based moon so important? According to both the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and NASA, who jointly launched the Cassini space probe to study Enceladus, these oceanic similarities could be key to finding signs of life beyond Earth. The lunar ocean currents could distribute and maintain temperature and saline-based nutrient levels that are vital to sustaining life. Jupiter's Great Red Spot May Survive By Eating Smaller Storms Jupiter's famous Great Red Spot is undoubtedly the storm to end all storms. A massive anticyclonic high-pressure storm with swirling winds that rage at speeds over 400 km per hour, it holds the title of the largest storm so far discovered in the solar system. And recently, scientists realized that the key to its size may be none other than storm cannibalism of sorts. In the past few years, some thought that the Great Red Spot may have been well on the way towards running out of steam at long last, as it appeared as though it was slowly decreasing in size. Additionally, smaller anticyclones, which were smaller than the mega storm but still about half the size of Earth, kept running into the storm and it appeared that they were taking small bites out of the swirling clouds and further decreasing the size. Upon further study, researchers now believe that the opposite is true. Rather than shrinking the Great Red Spot, the smaller anticyclones were being consumed by the larger storm, resulting in the latter increasing its internal rotation velocity and further fueling the enormous swirling mass. Because anticyclones, like the Great Red Spot, are composed of high-powered winds churning around a central area of intense pressurized air, when the smaller anticyclones collide, the larger storm effectively steals their rotational wind and uses it as a power-up of sorts in order to increase its own wind speeds. This process is what caused the storm to appear to shrink, when it was simply absorbing the forces of the smaller storms to become even stronger. Once the energy has been absorbed from the storm collision, the Great Red Spot would return to its previous size. Essentially, although it appeared that the smaller storms, named flakes, because of the way that they appear to flake off parts of the cloud swirling over the Great Red Spot, appeared to be shrinking the size of the storm, the larger storm was feeding on the flakes to become even stronger. The process of absorbing the energy from the anticyclones made the clouds covering the Great Red Spot contract and shrink, making it seem as though the storm itself was growing smaller. However, the entire time that researchers were attempting to discover what was happening to Jupiter's famous spot and why it appeared as though it was running out of energy, the powerful vortex at the center of the storm underneath the clouds was becoming ever stronger as it powered the winds that swirl famously across Jupiter's surface. Although the shrinking size and the deceptive nature of the flakes made it seem as though the Great Red Spot was going to disappear forever, scientists were very quickly reminded that, when it comes to space, not everything is as it seems, as the famous Great Red Spot was simply becoming stronger than ever. NASA can't explain strange spiral in space 
In 2006, scientists finally uncovered the true nature of star AFGL 3068, a first-of-its-kind spiral object 3,000 light-years away in the constellation Pegasus. Before this discovery, scientists knew the star existed, but the object was too faint for scientists to determine exactly what the spot was. Only after a 33-minute long exposure with the ultra-sensitive advanced camera for surveys on the Hubble Space Telescope did scientists begin to really see the spirals come into view. Scientists found that the entity consisted of large, perfectly placed coils of dust floating out in the universe. Before AFGL 3068, the only spirals found in space were known as spiral galaxies. This star is nothing like a spiral galaxy. First of all, it is not a galaxy at all. Instead, it is made up of a binary star system that includes two stars orbiting around each other. The first star is a red giant carbon star, and the second is a blue-white star that exists 103 astronomical units away from the red giant. 103 astronomical units are approximately two times the distance between the Sun and Pluto. Since the two stars are so far from one another, they take approximately 800 years to orbit around each other. So, how are the spirals created? In the most basic sense, the red giant releases carbon material. This material then combines to form larger molecules, which create fine black dust. This dust covers the red giant and blocks all or most of its light. The blue-white star's gravitational pull tugs the dust toward itself and away from the red giant, but most of the dust ends up escaping into space during the process. As the two binary stars circle each other, the black dust escapes outward to form a spiral. After determining how the spirals were created, scientists wondered how the system was being illuminated. The dust being dispelled is dark and has no illumination qualities of its own, yet it could still be seen. The star could not have illuminated the spirals because it was also covered in the black dust, so scientists determined that the spirals were being illuminated by our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Interestingly, this is the only celestial body that is not illuminated by sunlight, starlight, or fluorescence that has been photographed. While these phenomena might occur similarly in other systems, they were not officially discovered before AFGL 3068. This is because these phenomena can be difficult to find. First, the red giant is consistently losing significant amounts of mass in the form of black dust. That level of mass loss can only be temporary, and scientists must be in the right place at the right time. Second, the giant would have to be part of a binary system orbiting around another star big enough to have a large enough gravitational pull to draw in the black dust. This fantastic new discovery could help scientists and astronomers solve the many mysteries in other systems that were unsolvable before the discovery on AFGL 3068. Scientists discover a multi-planet system just 33 light-years away. Astronomical discoveries tend to be so fascinating because they happen far away, in places that seem so intangible, which adds to their mystery. 33 light years away, or about 10 parsecs, astronomers from MIT have discovered a new mysterious multiplanet system. This system is one of the closest multiplanet systems to our own in the Milky Way galaxy. Multiplanet systems are not created equal as this newly discovered galactic neighborhood is quite different from what we have. In this system lies a cool M dwarf star named HD 260655 that astronomers think hosts at least two planets that are similar in size to our Earth. Unlike Earth, astronomers believe these planets are not home to any life forms. The temperatures on these planets are too high to host any liquid water. Despite the fact that scientists do not believe these planets contain any life, it's still a fascinating find. Scientists will be able to look at the properties of the planets to determine what levels of atmosphere they may have, and the closeness of the system and the brightness of its star make this task easier. According to Michelle Kunamoto of MIT's Kavli Institute for Astrophysics and Space Research and one of the study's lead scientists, these planets ignite many questions the team want answers to. She questions, is there a volatile rich atmosphere around these planets? And are there signs of water or carbon-based species? These planets are fantastic test beds 
for those explorations. Space exploration is far from an easy endeavor, but with constantly advancing technology that collects new data, investigating faraway planets and planetary systems has become more achievable in recent years. This planetary system was identified by NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, a mission led by MIT to observe the closest, brightest stars and find dips in light that may indicate a planet. This is precisely what occurred in the discovery of this new planetary system. Michelle Kunamoto was monitoring incoming data from the satellite mission and noticed two dips in light from HD 260655. While the process of confirming TESS objects of interest can sometimes take years, archival data helped to speed up this timeline. The team located data from the high-resolution Eschel spectrometer in Hawaii, as well as from CARMEANS, an instrument that is part of the Cala Alto Observatory in Spain. Using the archival data, as well as Kunamoto's recent observations, the team was able to conclude that the TOIs were in fact planets. Hubble finds mysterious disk of blue stars around a black hole. When it comes to space, nearly everything that is discovered immediately generates several unanswered questions and reveals dozens of unsolved mysteries, and perhaps no phenomenon is shrouded in more mystique than black holes. Recently, researchers were able to solve one such mystery, the source of a mysterious blue light that was observed by astronomers using the NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope, encircling a supermassive black hole in the Andromeda Galaxy. Although the light had been first observed more than a decade before, no viable answer as to why it existed had been found, other than that it appeared to come from a cluster of blue stars. This in itself was mysterious, as the presence of such a close supermassive black hole should have torn apart any matter in the vicinity, preventing stars such as these from forming. It was not until new spectroscopic observations were made using Hubble's Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph that researchers realized that the light was coming from a cluster of over 400 blue stars that formed in a small, tightly packed disk around 200 million years ago. Surrounding the tight blue disk is an elliptical ring composed of cooler, redder stars that are much older than the central disk. Researchers measured the velocities of these stars as they traveled at high speeds around the black hole, trapped in the strength of its gravitational forces. In fact, they are traveling so incredibly fast that it would take them a mere 40 seconds to completely orbit Earth and only six minutes to arrive at the Moon. Todd Lauer with the National Optical Astronomy Observatory in Tucson, Arizona, led the group of astronomers that made the observations. The blue stars in the disk are so short-lived that it is unlikely in the long 12 billion year history of Andromeda that such a short-lived disk would appear now. Lauer said, That's why we think that the mechanism that formed this disk of stars probably formed other stellar disks in the past and will trigger them again in the future. We still don't know, however, how such a disk could form in the first place. It still remains an enigma. Although the mystery of what could be causing that strange blue light radiating from the immediate vicinity of a supermassive black hole, the fact remains that it seems outright impossible for stars to exist in the region at all. These discoveries, although still shrouded in mystery, will likely play a major role in the process of helping researchers prove ubiquitously that there is a star-forming black hole at the center of the Andromeda galaxy. John Cormendi of the University of Texas in Austin said that there are compelling reasons to believe that these are supermassive black holes, but extreme claims require extraordinarily strong evidence. We have to be sure that these are black holes and not dark clusters of dead stars. So for now, the search and the mystery continues. Rock found in Egypt comes from supernova. While new satellites and technologies are constantly being launched into space every day, we sometimes get space discoveries right here on Earth. According to a recently published research paper in the journal Icarus, a mysterious stone discovered in the Egyptian desert was confirmed to come from a supernova explosion from outside our own solar system. The stone named Hypatia, after a female Egyptian astronomer, was found in the Great Sand Sea in the mid-1990s. The sample was thought to be far different from anything that scientists have discovered on our Earth or even in the Milky Way galaxy. 
The stone has been analyzed by a group of chemists at the University of Johannesburg since 2013, and they have reached several hypotheses about its origins. They believe that a red giant star collapsed into a white dwarf star that then formed part of a binary system along with another star that it later consumed. That white dwarf star later exploded as a supernova, with gas atoms from the explosion getting caught in a dust cloud that the team believes formed the stone's body as that dust cloud formed solid rock. According to the researchers, this formation occurred more than 4 billion years ago, with the rock later hurtling towards Earth and eventually landing in the Egyptian desert. If the team's hypothesis is correct, Hepatia would be the first tangible evidence on Earth of a supernova-type IA explosion, according to Jan Kramers from the University of Johannesburg. Equally exciting is that Hepatia may also provide evidence that a parcel of dust from outer space could actually be incorporated in the solar nebula that our solar system was formed from without being fully mixed in. There has been an exhaustive search for a definitive answer as to what this alien rock truly is. From analyzing Hepatia, it was clear the stone could not have come from Earth, let alone our solar system. The rock only contained 1% of the silicon, manganese and chromium that it would have had if it had been born in our solar system. The stone also has exceedingly large amounts of other elements like iron, sulfur, copper and phosphorus. Space dust, asteroids and meteors in the Milky Way galaxy also do not seem to match the makeup of the stone. While there is evidence that Hepatia did not come from a red supergiant star, a familiar object in our universe, or a supernova type II, it does seem to match something far rarer. According to the researchers, Hepatia seems to fit something that would have come from a supernova type IA, which only occurs one or two times per century in each galaxy. It seems scientists have discovered something truly remarkable. Physicist claims alien messages may be hidden in the stars. Everyone has at some point wondered about the possibility of life outside of Earth. It is nearly impossible not to when gazing into the empty, never-ending space above us, counting the stars. With space being so vast and seemingly endless, many wonder how or why we have not yet contacted extraterrestrial life. This phenomenon has been named the Fermi Paradox. The Fermi Paradox refers to the confusing contradiction between the complete lack of evidence for extraterrestrial life and the seemingly high probability of their existence. Some scientists believe they have the solution to explain why we have not made any contact with aliens. Terry Rudolph, a quantum physicist at the Imperial College London, suggests that aliens have been attempting to communicate with us through the stars themselves. Rudolph speculates that if aliens were to communicate vast distances, they would likely attempt to do so in more subtle ways, as to direct any communication to one planet without interference from other extraterrestrial life. As a result, a possible method of communication would be through the stars. He further explains his hypothesis by stating that aliens could potentially manipulate the photons inside individual stars to alter the light emitted from them. This fluctuation in the light of a star could be translated if we could uncover the code. Rudolph postulates, photons can propagate billions of light years and retain significant quantum coherence. This makes stars a reliable resource for communication and allows for messages to be sent across extremely long distances without disturbance. He believes that this method of communication could be appealing to an alien population if they are aware of other alien populations that pose a threat. So how can we translate these messages? As an extensively educated physicist, Rudolf feels confident in the possibility of this theory. However, he does not claim that aliens are communicating in this manner, rather that it is possible. If his theory were true, it still leaves one crucial issue. We have no way of translating messages in the stars. If aliens were utilizing this method, they would need to provide us with some form of a decoder to allow us to understand any of their messages. Until then, Surely, it remains a mystery. Telescopes detect the biggest explosion since the Big Bang 
In a recent development, astronomers have discovered the largest explosion since the Big Bang. The explosion resulting from a massive black hole occurred at the center of the Ephucus galaxy, about 390 million light-years away. This blast is not just speculation from eager scientists. NASA was able to confirm the blast because the radio data and X-rays matched each other, and low-frequency radio telescopes found that the cavity was filled with radio plasma. While scientists have long been interested in the Ephucus galaxy due to its strange curved edge, there had been plenty of doubt about if this curve could have been caused by a black hole. Black holes can release vast amounts of material and energy as radio jets that collide with other objects in the locality. Despite the black hole theory, many astronomers actually believed that the cavity was too big to be a black hole. The team who discovered this incredible event are researchers at the International Centre for Radio Astronomy Research in Western Australia. The team used four telescopes for their work, each stationed in different parts of the world, including the European Space Agency's XMM Newton X-ray Space Observatory and NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. The explosion was so large that it cut through the hot gas that surrounds black holes, called cluster plasma. According to Melanie johnson Hollett, a professor at Curtin University and co-author of the research paper, we've seen outbursts in the centres of galaxies before, but this one is really, really massive, and we don't know why it's so big. The nature of this massive explosion has drawn comparisons to another destructive, large explosion right here on Earth, the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, which destroyed about 200 square miles of wilderness. Despite these comparisons, the crater the eruption created could fit 15 Milky Way galaxies in a row. Another interesting aspect of this explosion is just how slow it occurred. According to Johnston Hollett, the explosion looked as if it had been slowly happening over hundreds of millions of years. Excitingly, this discovery may have made it possible to find more outbursts in the future. Astronomers are now able to use low-frequency radio telescopes that may make it possible to discover more explosions like this one. Strange Infrared Light Emitting from a Pulsar The cosmos is a thing of awe, horror and fascination. Space has been the subject of speculation for aeons. Among some of the most questioned space-related topics, black holes and neutron stars have to be some of the most popular discussed topics due to how little we truly know about them, or how they fit in the larger scheme of the universe. Recently, the Hubble Space Telescope has discovered something unsettling and intriguing. One neutron star has been caught displaying strange swirls of glowing infrared light. When a supernova explodes, it sometimes leaves behind neutron stars, Neutron stars are an estimated 1.4 times denser than our Sun, but only 12.4 miles in diameter. Space.com claims that at such an insane density, a teaspoon would weigh a billion tons. Occasionally, neutron stars spin at high speeds and release electromagnetic radiation, such as X-rays. These neutron stars are known as pulsars. RXJ 0806.4-4124 is the name of the neutron star emitting infrared light and studying it might help develop our understanding of how neutron stars work. RX and six other X-ray pulsars near us, being 3,300 light-years away from Earth, are referred to by astronomers as the Magnificent Seven. The reason why these seven stars are so extraordinary is that they burn intensely hot, hotter than they logically should, given the available energy at their disposal and their age. They also spin around at a slower rate than most other known pulsars. Bettina Posselt, a lead author of an astrological paper in the Astrophysical Journal, states, We observed an extended area of infrared emissions around this neutron star the total size of which translates into about 200 astronomical units, approximately 18 billion miles, at the assumed distance of the pulsar. Never before has a pulsar emitted infrared light, especially with such an insanely large signal. The emission is clearly above what the neutron star itself emits. It doesn't come from the neutron star alone. And though astronomers are frantically coming up with theories and suggestions, Nothing can be proven just yet. We will have to observe and hope that we will be able to uncover the secrets of the pulsar RXJ 
0806.4-4124. First ever documented tectonic activity on exoplanet. Exoplanets are extremely hard to see. Hidden by a bright light that glares from the stars they orbit, exoplanets are basically classified as anything that orbits a larger star like Earth. In a new report submitted by the University of Bern, scientists found that the night side of an exoplanet called LHS 3844b is tectonically active. This exoplanet, which orbits the red dwarf star LHS 3844, was detected by the Transiting Exoplanet Survey satellite. Though its surface is comparable to that of Mercury, it is larger than Earth and orbits its parent star in 11 hours. Tobias Meyer, an astronomer of the university, mentioned the huge variance of temperatures. We thought that such a large temperature difference could affect the flow of matter inside the planet. The temperatures being referenced to are degrees upwards of 800 degrees Celsius on the sun's side and below minus 25 Celsius on the night side. Similar to the activity seen in Hawaii and Iceland's volcanic areas, researchers witnessed the swelling of material on one side of the planet. They determined this swelling could cause activity across the hemisphere. While they believe that one side of this exoplanet has a great deal of volcanic activity, the other side of the mysterious planet seems to have none at all. This type of tectonic activity documentation, however, is a first. Until now, we have only seen volcanoes of this nature grow in areas on Earth. How many more tectonically active stars and planets could be in our atmosphere? We are excited to keep following along and find out. Scientists are realizing that a mysterious, fast radio burst from space looks strangely familiar. In the galaxy M81, 12 million light-years away, scientists saw strange, bright flashes that are drawing up memories from flashes found in the Crab Nebula. The Crab Nebula is a famous remnant of an old supernova that humans witnessed all the way back in 1054 AD. Those flashes, now known as repeating fast radio bursts, or FRBs, were seen by multiple different cultures, such as Chinese astronomers who saw the star above the southern horn of Taurus, as well as Arab and Japanese astronomers. The flashes remained brightly shining for 23 days and were six times brighter than Venus, according to the astronomers at the time. It took 700 years for the star remnant to be spotted by telescope by John Bevis, a British astronomer. Famous astronomer Charles Messier even found the star 27 years later and included it in his catalogue of Messier objects. Then, another 200 years later, in the 1960s, astronomers detected a fluctuating radio source where the Crab Nebula lies and determined that the signal came from a pulsar or a neutron star with a strong magnetic field. Now, the flashes that were recently detected by scientists are being compared to those witnessed 1,000 years ago. According to Kenzie Ninmo, a PhD student in astronomy, some of the signals we measured are short and extremely powerful, in just the same way as some signals from the Crab Pulsar. Astronomers are still trying to figure out the nature of fast radio bursts because where they were found is quite peculiar. Usually, FRBs are found in galaxies abundant with young stars, but the radio dishes pointed the signal's source to a group of old stars called a globular cluster. The source of the signal challenges the idea that magnetars, the strongest magnets in the universe and a type of supernova remnant, are responsible for FRBs. This is because the explanation works well when young stars are abundant, but when there is a substantial number of old stars, as is true for galaxy M81, the explanation begins to make less sense. Some astronomers, however, believe it's possible that the magnetar was created by a white dwarf that pulled gas away from another nearby star. The added mass may have caused the dwarf star to turn into a magnetar. Whatever the explanation of the fast radio bursts in M81, astronomers believe there is definitely something strange going on. As time passes, hopefully, answers begin to come in. Asteroid impacts may spread life to other planets. Extraterrestrial life is something that has undoubtedly piqued everyone's interest at some point during their lifetime. 
Computer simulations now seem to suggest that microbes within rocks, fired from Earth, could possibly last long enough in space for them to research other places and planets within our solar system. Meaning there is the possibility that we may be sending life to other planets unintentionally. The study has been submitted for publication in the journal Icarus and presents a new perspective on the panspermia hypothesis. The panspermia hypothesis suggests that there is life out there in the universe and that life is moved or distributed through space via meteoroids, asteroids, comets, planetoids and similar astronomical phenomena. This is purely a theoretical concept as we do not have a way to test it. However, some are suggesting that Earth is indeed playing a role in this. Scientists such as Mauricio Reyes Ruiz from the National Autonomous University of Mexico used computer modeling to demonstrate the impact of an asteroid or comet hitting Earth. The idea is that with enough velocity, there would be so much debris released upon the impact that it would be kicked up into space. The research team found that, dependent upon the velocity and whereabouts on the planet it hit, the debris could reach to the orbits of the Moon, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and possibly even further. Their computer model only considered 30,000 years, as this means that any radiation damage could be taken into consideration, though this still means there could be a large amount of matter from Earth containing live bacteria in space. Planetary scientist Dr. Simon O'Toole from the Australian Astronomical Observatory said that the advances in computing technology are truly what facilitated this discovery. He said, In the past we didn't have the processing capacity to carry out these simulations beyond the Moon or Venus. We do not know how long this bacteria could survive in space, but this is an active field of research. Even if they do not survive long, it's baffling to consider microbes from Earth in another planet's orbit. As the privatization of space exploration continues to advance, SpaceX, the pioneering aerospace company founded by Elon Musk, has become a leader in the development of innovative rocket technology and ambitious missions to colonize Mars. Alongside the public's fascination with these advancements, there has been a growing interest in reports of unidentified objects spotted in the vicinity of SpaceX missions. Since the company's inception, there have been several instances of mysterious aircraft sightings reported during SpaceX missions. These sightings have ranged from mysterious lights and unexplained objects, seen near rocket launches, to unidentified craft observed near the International Space Station during SpaceX resupply missions. One of the most widely discussed sightings happened on April 19, when a strange black triangle was seen in the background of the Starlink mission which led to a flurry of social media posts and speculations about advanced visitors. Shortly after the launch, observers spotted the black triangle in the background, and theories were soon put forward to explain what the object was. Although SpaceX didn't respond to this sighting, in the past, officials said that these objects are likely space debris. Many of these sightings associated with SpaceX missions have been debunked by experts who provide plausible, natural explanations for the observed phenomena. These explanations often involve atmospheric and lighting conditions, space debris, or other human-made objects in Earth's orbit. While some sightings can be readily explained by natural phenomena or human activity, others remain unexplained and continue to generate debate among enthusiasts and researchers. The growing interest in sightings related to SpaceX missions has several implications for the public's perception of unidentified phenomena and the possibility of advanced life. As private space exploration becomes more commonplace, the general public has greater access to information and visual media related to rocket launches and other space missions, increasing the likelihood of witnessing and reporting unusual phenomena. Additionally, the association of sightings with cutting-edge space technology and missions, such as those conducted by SpaceX, can fuel the public's curiosity and speculation about the existence of extraterrestrial life and advanced civilizations. This interest is further amplified by the recent declassification of footage and reports by the United States government, which has led to increased public discourse and debate about unidentified aerial phenomena. As of right now, these sightings that have been captured during SpaceX missions represent a fascinating intersection of public interest in cutting-edge space exploration and the ongoing debate surrounding unidentified phenomena. 
While many of these sightings can be debunked through careful analysis and expert explanations, some remain unexplained, continuing to captivate the imaginations of enthusiasts and the general public alike. As private space exploration continues to advance, it is likely that interest in mysterious aircrafts will increase. NASA's Webb delivers deepest infrared image of universe yet. The James Webb Telescope also captured an infrared image of SMACS 0723, which is a galaxy cluster filled with a myriad of various galaxies. The JWST went a step further by highlighting some of the faintest objects in space ever captured. Granted, the image taken is nothing but a tiny part of a huge universe, a small snapshot into the distant unknown. The reason behind the choice of capturing a galaxy cluster is that clusters act somewhat like magnifying glasses. They help astronomers find galaxies even further away. Some of these distant galaxies witnessed the universe's infancy billions of years ago. The JWST used its NearCam to create the image utilizing a composition of varying wavelengths. It took just over 12 hours to produce, and the results outshine even the amazing images taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, many of which take several weeks to complete. SMACS 0723 was captured by the James Webb Telescope in the exact same beauty it possessed over 4.6 billion years ago, a live reflection from the past. This galaxy cluster can be observed from the south in the direction of the constellation Volans. There is still not much known about the galaxies in the cluster, but scientists hope to uncover more as the JWST's data is processed. The image produced by the James Webb Telescope focuses on tiny clusters of stars that are typically overlooked or overshadowed in images taken of space, but the JWST image showcases all the tiny features of the galaxy cluster that have never been seen prior. The light we see is reflected from billions of years ago. We see these galaxies as they were long before the rise of humanity on Earth because the light takes so long to reach us. When looking at the image, we see youthful galaxies, some of which formed not long after the Big Bang itself. Scientists hope to discover individual galaxies in the cluster's masses. Chemical compositions, ages and personal histories, every galaxy has a story to tell that astronomers hope to uncover and piece together. Space dust is prevalent in the image and encases our cosmos in colours of all sorts, highlighting the glorious beauty and glamour of our cosmos for how otherworldly it is. Dust is crucial in the creation of stars, but some galaxies, such as blue ones, possess very little of it. Red galaxies, in comparison, have a plentitude of this star-creating dust, while green galaxies generally are mostly filled with chemical compounds such as hydrocarbons. All this amazing research will shed light on how galaxies form and why they are this way, including insight into how they merge, expand, and thrive. Perhaps scientists might use this information to answer the question of why some galaxies cease star production entirely. The James Webb Telescope has captured 48 different galaxies at once using its near-infrared spectrograph. Astronomers detect secret water reserves in the solar system's largest canyon. Valles Marineris, also known as the Grand Canyon of Mars, is the largest canyon in our solar system. But Valles Marineris attracts scientific curiosity for more than just its size. The 2,485-mile-long canyon system may also be home to hidden reserves of water. Recent data from an instrument known as the ESA Roscosmos ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter's friend shows abnormal hydrogen levels below Mars's surface. Unlike previous instruments, FRIEND, which stands for Fine Resolution Epithermal Neutron Detector, can detect neutrons up to a meter below the surface of Mars. According to physicist Alexei Malakov, neutrons are produced when highly energetic particles known as galactic cosmic rays strike Mars. Low neutron levels indicate the presence of hydrogen. Because dry soil emits more neutrons than wet soil, the number of neutrons emitted by soil beneath Mars's surface can indicate levels of water. Between May 2018 and February 2021, Friend collected the data that indicates high concentrations of subsurface hydrogen. It suggests that soil up to a meter deep in the Valles Marineris region 
contains water that is either locked inside minerals or ice. Because it is unusual for minerals in this region to contain large amounts of water, experts believe that water ice near the surface is the more probable explanation. If the hydrogen is truly forming water molecules, this suggests that water makes up up to 40% of the area close to the surface in the region. This watery area is roughly the size of the Netherlands. This discovery is unexpected, as the pressure and temperature around the Mars equator does not create a suitable environment for large stores of water. The presence of water in Valles Marineris suggests unusual conditions, possibly relating to the angle of its slopes. The water may also be sitting in scattered ancient deposits. This discovery of water is fascinating because of its surprising location, but this is not the first reserve found on the planet. It appears that the majority of water on Mars exists in the poles in the form of ice. The warmth surrounding the equator prevents the formation of ice at many latitudes. Water on Mars is typically found at higher latitudes, but this recent finding suggests it can be located under the surface as well. The watery region of Valles Marineris is abundant despite unfavorable conditions at the equator. Because of this, it has been compared to the permafrost regions of Earth, where ice is constantly present underneath the dry soil due to lower temperatures. It is still unclear exactly why water has been able to form near the Mars equator and what form that water takes. Understanding the form and conditions of this water may lead to even more important discoveries. This water could expand the possibilities for exploration on Mars. Space crew would likely land around the equator, and accessible water close to the surface could mean greater survival capabilities for the crew. If the water exists in a permafrost-like state, it could contain frozen microorganisms or signs of previous life in the form of organic molecules. And if this water is only a meter below the surface, signs of life on Mars might not be so difficult to come by after all. Scientists say that four mysterious signals from outer space are coming from galaxies like ours. Astronomers have discovered strange signals coming from the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Australian scientists, using the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder radio telescope, detected these signals four times over the span of two weeks. The transmissions, originating roughly 4,000 light-years away near the core of our galaxy, consist of irregular pulses and bursts that scientists have never seen before. During the early stages of planet formation, radio signals of similar frequencies are emitted. These new signals are more erratic than those emitted during planet creation, confusing scientists. Nothing about the signals follow a pattern that has been seen before. The intensity of the radio signal varies randomly. The orientation and rotational direction of the transmission is random and changes frequently, and the timing of the signals cannot be planned. Experts from the University of Sydney have shared they believe the signals are coming from a new type of star that we have never seen before. Ziteng Wang, a PhD student in the School of Physics at the University of Sydney, said the brightness of the object also varies dramatically by a factor of 100, and the signal switches on and off apparently at random. We've never seen anything like it. Due to the variability of the transmission, scientists first believed it could be from a supernova, solar flare or pulsar but the emissions received do not match with what is known about those phenomena. Still, scientists have no idea what caused the signals. Their hope is placed on a new radio telescope being built within the next decade. The telescope, called the Transcontinental Square Kilometre Array Radio Telescope, will hopefully solve this mystery. Professor Tara Murphy from the Sydney Institute for Astronomy and the School of Physics said, we expect the power of this telescope will help us solve mysteries such as this latest discovery, but it will also open vast new swathes of the cosmos to exploration in the radio spectrum. From discoveries that help us understand the universe to discoveries that make us question what we already know, the vast expanse of space continues to make us wonder. An unusual luminous sphere has been captured on video hovering near the sun. Groups that investigate unidentified objects have alleged that this is additional evidence indicating the existence of advanced beings. 
Oddly enough, those who saw the image said that this same object was seen a few years back, and noted that it appeared to be draining the sun of its energy. Although NASA and scientists said this wasn't the case, and that what we were most likely looking at was something natural, that didn't stop believers pointing out strange facts surrounding the two events. Theorists have recently found footage captured by NASA's Helio viewer, which they believe depicts a peculiar spherical object drawing energy from the Earth's primary energy source. Over the years, there have been many reports of unidentified objects seen around the Sun. These objects, which appear as bright or dark dots, have puzzled both amateur and professional astronomers. While some people dismiss these sightings as mere anomalies, others believe that they are evidence of advanced activity. One of the most famous incidents involving these objects are the large round objects that have been seen close to the Sun, with some describing them as being massive black circular objects that can occasionally be seen hovering near the Sun for several hours. NASA's Solar and Heliospheric Observatory captured footage of what appeared to be a giant object passing by the Sun. The object, which was estimated to be several times larger than the Earth, was seen hovering near the Sun before disappearing into space. The incident sparked a debate among enthusiasts, with some claiming that the object was proof of the existence of advanced life. However, skeptics argue that these sightings can be explained by natural phenomena. Some suggest that these objects may be asteroids or comets that are passing near the Sun. Others claim that they are simply artifacts caused by camera glitches or other technical issues. Despite the skepticism, there have been many other reported sightings of mysterious objects around the Sun. In 2016, for example, footage captured by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory showed a strange object hovering near the Sun. The object appeared to be moving in a straight line before suddenly changing direction and shooting off into space. There have also been reports of large objects seen during solar flares, which are intense bursts of radiation that occur on the surface of the Sun. Some people believe that these objects are attracted to the energy released during these events. While it is difficult to confirm these reports, many researchers are continuing to study these phenomena in an effort to determine their origins. Some scientists have also suggested that these sightings may be evidence of advanced technology developed by humans. They point out that many countries, including the United States, are currently developing advanced space technologies that could explain these sightings. Regardless of their origins, the sightings of large objects around the Sun have captured the public's imagination. Many people believe that these objects are evidence of advanced life, and they continue to study these phenomena in an effort to determine their true nature. As more advanced technologies become available, it is likely that we will continue to uncover new mysteries about the universe around us. Engineers solve data glitch on NASA's Voyager 1. Voyager 1 is the most distant human-made object in space. It's approximately 14.6 billion miles away from Earth. It was launched by NASA on September 5, 1977, as part of the Voyager program to gather information on the outer solar system and interstellar space outside of the Sun's heliosphere. Voyager 2 was launched 16 days after. Voyagers 1 and 2 are referred to as the twin probes. Operating for nearly half a century, the two probes have gathered valuable data for NASA over the years. Voyager 1 made amazing breakthroughs in the field of astronomy. It made flybys of Jupiter, Saturn, and Saturn's largest moon, Titan. Voyager 1 is the first probe to take detailed images of the two gas giants' moons. You might be wondering where Voyager 1 is right now. The quick answer is that it is in deep space. It made it outside of the edges of the solar system and into the interstellar medium. Due to the great distance, it traveled away from the Earth. It takes about two days to send a message to the probe and another two days to get a response back, so the real answer to the question on where exactly Voyager 1 is right now is that we will never know, at least not in real time. Many people are curious to know if Voyager 1 is still working properly. After traveling billions and billions of miles over the years and considering the technology that was used to build it back in the 70s, it would be understandable if the probe breaks down and goes out of commission. Despite its age, it's very much still working, except for a data glitch. This glitch caused the Voyager 1's antenna, which is pointing to the Earth, to send garbled data. 
This issue started in May of 2022. NASA engineers found the cause of the glitch to be a misrouting of data. They later found out that this is being caused by a command generated by another onboard computer that had stopped functioning years ago. The team concludes that there is an underlying issue somewhere else in the spacecraft. This leads many to believe that this problem is a threat to the long-term functionality of Voyager 1. Voyager project manager Suzanne Dodd stated that the solution is simply to send a command to Voyager 1 to send data to the correct computer. Thankfully, the glitch was solved and Voyager 1 is back to normal operation. Scientists find remains of baby planets swallowed by Jupiter. The largest planet in our solar system, the fifth away from the Sun and perhaps best known for its large red spot, Jupiter, the gas giant, is an interesting point of research, and whilst recently the planet's moons have been the star of the show when it comes to research around this planet, this time Jupiter itself is making headlines. Scientists believe that they may have uncovered a rather interesting aspect behind Jupiter's composition. The gas giant is more than twice as big as the other planets in our solar system combined. Though a June 2022 discovery just might be pushing us a step closer to figuring out just how this mammoth planet came to be quite so colossal. Researchers have uncovered that Jupiter has seemingly taken in the remains of baby planets that surrounded it, letting it become the huge planet we know it as today. Despite the large physical presence in our solar system, Jupiter is somewhat difficult to gain an insight on. The planet has an upper atmosphere that, whilst pretty, manages to conceal an awful lot of information. Jupiter features a stunning set of swirling clouds, which have been well documented. It's what's below these clouds that we really don't know about. This new finding has come along following a clear view of what's going on beneath the atmosphere, giving us a glimpse at the chemistry working away within. Lead researcher Yamila Miguel, an astrophysicist at Leiden University, based in the Netherlands, explained how Jupiter, despite being one of the first planets to become part of our solar system, remains very unknown. In fact, we have almost no certain definitive information on the formation of the planet. The research in this new study was made possible thanks to the NASA space probe Juno. Juno was sent out on a mission specifically aiming to uncover the origins and evolutions of Jupiter. It's hoped that a clearer perspective on Jupiter could be applicable to plenty of other aspects of our solar system and beyond. It would seem that Juno is delivering on its mission to find out more on Jupiter, as the probe's gravitational data is what allowed us to take a peek past the clouds hovering above the planet. The team were able to fathom out the layout of the rocky substances down to the planet's core, where a whole host of different chemicals were uncovered. Between Jupiter's well-established status as a gaseous giant and the rocky materials seen throughout the journey to the core, some scientists have suggested that the chemical composition of Jupiter suggests it took in, or devoured, planetesimals, essentially baby planets, to push forth its own growth. Pluto has giant ice volcanoes that could hint at the possibility of life. As it turns out, Secrets have been hiding on the dwarf planet Pluto's surface all this time. According to astronomers, giant ice volcanoes have recently erupted with icy sludge. This area on Pluto is completely unique compared to what astronomers have seen in our solar system. This new discovery was made possible with NASA's New Horizons spacecraft, which captured photos of Pluto's moons and surface in 2015. These images were used to observe Pluto more closely than before and led to the discovery of two prominent peaks that were thought to be icy volcanoes. This speculation was further proved by clues of erupted ice lava found in the images. While we tend to associate volcano eruptions with hot lava, ice volcanoes or cryovolcanoes erupt with water ice mixed with other substances such as methane or ammonia. For years, astronomers have been searching for evidence of these cryovolcanoes on other solar objects like the dwarf planet Ceres and Saturn's moon Titan. As Pluto has been long suspected of having cryovolcanoes due to it resting on the frigid edge of the solar system's Kuiper belt, these photos provide more evidence for their existence on the dwarf planet. 
The eruptions of slush are also expected to keep their shape due to the average temperature of Pluto sitting at minus 387 degrees Fahrenheit. According to the author of the study, Kelsey Singer, the icy material was probably more like the texture of toothpaste when it first erupted out of the ice volcanoes. But due to the extreme temperatures on Pluto, the liquid water quickly formed massive domes found on the region. Due to the lack of impact craters in the area around the cryovolcanoes that are usually seen on Pluto's surface, it is suggested that the ice volcanoes were active about 100 to 200 million years ago, a relatively short time in the grand scheme of things. This recent activity indicates to astronomers that the volcanoes may erupt again just as volcanoes on Earth switched from dormancy to activity. Astronomers know that Pluto once had a subsurface ocean, and the discovery of these ice volcanoes points to the possibility that they may still be present. This possibility of a liquid ocean existing on Pluto increases the once 0% possibility of existing life on Pluto to a slim chance. As Singer points out, there are still a lot of challenges for any organisms trying to survive there. They would still need some source of continual nutrients, and if the volcanism is episodic and thus the heat and water availability is variable, that is sometimes tough for organisms as well. Despite the challenges, this slim chance has been a giant leap in the knowledge of what we previously believed about Pluto. The Oldest Black Hole in the Universe Many celestial bodies in the universe are old, but when scientists in 2017 realized they had found what could be one of the oldest black holes in the universe, they were understandably ecstatic. The black hole, ULAS J1342, 0928 has a name just as big as its size. Astronomers were flabbergasted to find that the black hole, located millions of light years away, had a mass that's more than 800 million times larger than that of our Sun. Even more amazingly, the gigantic black hole reached this mass when the universe was only at 5% of its current age. The gargantuan ULAS black hole first came into creation a mere 690 million years after the Big Bang, a very short time in the relative time of the universe. The discovery of such a massive celestial body may teach us more about black holes and their massive sizes. This may shine a light on how the conditions of the early universe changed to what they currently are today. The black hole is also paired with a nearby quasar, and the bright display of light also takes a new record for the furthest discovered quasar. The record used to belong to ULAS J1120-0641, which is a distant 13.04 billion light-years from us, and came into existence around 750 million years after the Big Bang. It's believed that at the centre of most, if not all, galaxies lies a supermassive black hole. These black holes are much larger than their standard-sized namesakes, and can reach anywhere from millions to billion times the mass of our Sun. Studies in the past have developed the idea that these massive space vacuums create huge displays of light as they devour local stars and other matter. These events are believed to create what we know as quasars, which are some of the brightest objects in the known universe. Because of their incredible brightness, researchers and astronomers are able to pick up and detect quasar activity from some of the farthest points in the known universe, meaning they are some of the most distant objects we know that exist. Quasars that are further away are much older in age, and the older and further a quasar is, the longer it takes for the light to travel to Earth. there may be 300 million habitable planets in our galaxy. Late in 2020, NASA claimed that recent evidence and calculations suggest that our galaxy holds at least 300 million planets that could potentially harbour life, with the closest being 20 light years away from Earth. A team of researchers used old observational data from the Kepler telescope, which scanned the Milky Way to find habitable worlds. From that data, the scientists found that about 50% of the sun-like stars throughout our galaxy system have planets with environments and sizes that might be capable of holding liquid water. 
Four of these planets are within 30 light-years from Earth. They calculate that as low as 7% of these stars would have habitable planets, which leads to their 300 million figure estimates. The experts say that it could even be as high as 75% chance, which would then reach up to 3 billion planets. NASA's Kepler Space Telescope operated for nine years as it searched space for planets that orbit other stars. Its mission was only supposed to last three years, but it managed to conserve fuel so well that it stretched three gallons into nine years of orbit. It confirmed about 2,662 planets in our galaxy and proved there were more planets than stars in it. It gathered so much data that researchers had to use a computer algorithm to try and sort through it all. The algorithm still made mistakes and identified many false positives, so teams are currently going through the observations by hand to check whether any planet was missed or incorrectly identified. The scientists narrowed their search to planets that were of similar size or at least half that of Earth. There are many factors that result in a planet being habitable but overall it needs to be rocky. Any planets larger than Earth are usually gaseous. They also looked for stars that resembled our Sun in age and temperature and data from ESA's Gaia telescope to review the energy output of these individual stars. This data can inform them whether the star emits too much radiation or not enough energy to sustain life. They can then observe whether water is able to survive in liquid form on these planets. With Gaia's details on the stars within the galaxy cross-referencing Kepler's data, researchers plan to determine which stars and planets have an atmosphere that supports habitability. Physicists reveal aliens might use black holes as quantum computers. The Fermi paradox is the belief that if extraterrestrial beings really exist somewhere in the universe, there would be far more conclusive evidence that we currently have pointing to their presence. This particular paradox has plagued astronomers, cosmologists, researchers and alien enthusiasts alike as they continue their search for any indication of advanced life in the universe. Many hold out hope that the lack of evidence does not necessitate the conclusion of its non-existence. Some alternative ideas and potential resolutions to this paradox also claim that there are many reasons why such evidence may be hard to find. Either the living organisms do not operate on a massive scale as may be necessary for there to be evidence of life left behind, or that there simply is not enough material used to result in evidence that could be detected. Another prevalent notion is that because the universe is so massive, there is a good chance that advanced civilizations and groups of extraterrestrial beings may simply be too engaged and involved in their own activities, or limited to specific regions which makes them even less likely to be found. Just because we have not yet found evidence of aliens does not mean we can say with complete certainty that they absolutely do not exist. Now, an even more recent study is giving researchers another idea of why we might not be finding hard proof of aliens. The possibility that these extraterrestrial beings could be using black holes as some sort of quantum computer. What this means in terms of the search for life is that potential civilizations in the rest of the universe may be, on purpose or inadvertently, concealing their existence using highly advanced technology not entirely accessible to us on Earth. Quantum computing is much faster, better and a huge improvement upon the technology we use in our everyday lives as digital computing. Quantum computing is also immune to decryption, meaning that its biggest strength lies in keeping information hidden and concealed. And because researchers have been seeking proof by means of radio messages, directed energy such as lasers or gravitational waves among many others, the lack of evidence could be a direct result of the way black holes are potentially being used as quantum computers. This new theory is exciting because it poses a possible solution to the Fermi paradox, as well as potentially directing the efforts of researchers towards potentially better means of finding evidence of life in the universe. Asteroid Yugu made up of organic molecules that are building blocks of life. There is a prominent theory in the field of astronomy which maintains that all basic building blocks of life did not originally come from the Earth itself. In fact, 
it's argued that these organic molecules were delivered to the planet from outside to eventually land on its surface during its infancy. The organic molecules that make up the basic foundations for all life on Earth are a vast array of compounds containing a combination of the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and other atoms. Such compounds are created by chemical reactions that do not need or use living organisms, but rather are the main underpinnings of all life. And now, evidence of these organic molecules or building blocks have been found within substances that come from outer space asteroids. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency spacecraft Hayabusa 2 was able to obtain samples from the asteroid Yugu and return those samples to Earth where they were studied and broken down to their basics. This is an enormous undertaking and has moved researchers one step further to the confirmation that the theory about how life really came to exist on Earth may actually hold more truth than was originally believed. The sample contains several types of amino acids that are used by living organisms in order to build proteins essential to regulating chemical reactions and forming structures like hair or muscle. Even more incredible, was the finding of organic prebiotic molecules that are usually formed in the presence of water. Aliphatic amines, carboxylic acid, polysilic aromatic hydrocarbons, and nitrogen-containing heterosilic compounds. The results of these studies are showing that the asteroid has similar compositions to meteorites in space, meteorites that have been known to have a higher exposure to water. Further information would clarify just how far this evidence goes, and what is lacking from these samples is a good indication of what researchers should keep looking for. Specifically, some of the resources that have been found in other carbon-rich asteroids are missing from these Yugu samples, sugars, and components of DNA and RNA. The research team suspects that the asteroid is not lacking, but rather that further studies deeper into the asteroid are necessary to locate these molecules. James Webb Telescope Finds Distant Galaxies That Shouldn't Exist The James Webb Space Telescope has by now been in space for over a year in its current mission. It has provided immense important information thus far, and now the telescope has discovered galaxies that simply should not exist. That is because these galaxies are too big, the stars within them too old, and these two details have shaken all previous notions of how the universe looked and operated in its earliest existence. What's more, these findings do not match earlier observations made by the telescope's predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope. Two key elements of what the universe looked like in its youth have been compromised. First, the prior conclusion that the galaxies then were small and young, and second, that as a result of their size and age, their stars would burn blue. Now this seems to not be the case. When researchers received images from the James Webb Space Telescope, the last thing they expected to see were the big red galaxies with masses equaling that of the Milky Way. This is astounding because due to the way time and space works in the universe, these images of the galaxies should theoretically be far, far younger than ours. It's necessary to get further confirmation of what has been detected by the telescope and what the images are showing us. Just because it seems that these large red spots are older, larger galaxies doesn't necessarily mean they are. The truth of the matter is that because there are so many factors at play, particularly when acquiring data from so far away, both in distance and time, there are a lot of variables, such as the possibility that certain stars in the early universe might simply emit light in a way that is different to what we originally thought. What might seem like a galaxy could be a star shining in an unusual, never-before-seen manner. This is the complicated yet exciting thing about space, and we are constantly learning and evolving. Astronomers see moons forming in disks around distant exoplanet. One question that has played on the minds of astronomers for decades with no real answer is how planets and their moons are formed. But thanks to new research, we could be one step closer to answering that very question. Within our solar system, we can see a broad range of moons, from the icy moons like Jupiter's Io to the volcanic surfaces seen on Neptune's Tristan. Whilst we have recorded and observed plenty of moons that orbit the planets in our solar system, 219 to be precise, we are yet to observe any moons beyond Pluto. 
Planets outside of our solar system are known as exoplanets and moons, by definition, orbit a planet. Therefore, it is safe to assume that there are a fair number of moons orbiting these exoplanets too. Despite having found more than 4,000 exoplanets, scientists are yet to definitively see an exomoon. There are six potential candidates under surveillance that could be orbiting exoplanets, but we are awaiting confirmation. A particular duo of exoplanets, not unlike Jupiter, have been observed for years. They sit nearly 400 light-years away from Earth and may have recently given us the next step in detecting an exomoon and seeing how moons are formed. Astronomers have observed what is being described as a disk of debris orbiting one of these exoplanets. This is a circle of rocks and gas that is slowly and gradually forming together from its own gravity. Could we have observed a moon in the process of its creation? Many astronomical discoveries are made by noticing a small flicker or slight variation in data sets that tell us to probe further. This phenomenon, however, was captured clear as day in a photograph. This photograph has sparked plenty of excitement and discussion among scientists. An astronomer working at Stanford University, Bruce McIntosh, although not involved with the research, commented, I don't have coherent scientific thoughts. I just look at the image and say, wow, every time I see it. The discovery was first reported in the Astrophysical Journal Letters on July the 22nd and has reignited discussions into how moons are formed. Theories have spread within scientific communities, suggesting that high-force impacts may aid the formation, or magnetic whirlpools that disrupt the gravitational pull could be behind the creation of moons. Miriam Benesty, the lead author of the study and astronomer from the University of Grenoble, says, We have all these theories that are beautiful, but if you cannot test them, they could be completely wrong. This concept of a theory lacking falsifiability or being unable to be proved presents an issue to numerous branches of science, most famously psychology and astronomy, where things can be a little harder to experiment. However, the star system in which this disk of debris has been spotted could present a good opportunity to criticize, rule out and find support for all of these theories. This system is very young in comparison to our own solar system, with the exoplanets PDS-70b and PDS-70c still having their own disk of gas and dust encircling them, indicating they were only recently formed. It was in 2019, a month after the discovery of PDS-70c, that the dust suggesting an exomoon could be forming was spotted via Chile's Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA. Despite having been the first sign of activity, the signal was incredibly faint, though follow-up observations by Dr. Benesti's team revealed the disk of debris that could be the start of an exomoon forming. It is hoped that within a short amount of time, these methods and patterns of discoveries can become routine and run-of-the-mill. There are a number of telescopes and space observatories with high-tech equipment and that are very powerful that will be open and available for use over the next few years. Hopefully, we will be able to report exomoons themselves being caught on camera, full-formed and entirely confirmed. The discovery of moons in the making is arguably more exciting than stumbling across fully formed moons. Hopefully, soon enough, we will be able to observe the final product of the exomoons. Astronauts could get oxygen from moon rocks. Space exploration has surprised us with the level of rewards we continue to receive. According to a team of scientists at China's Nanjing University, compounds found in lunar soil may have the capability to produce oxygen and fuel to support moon missions. The team studied moon samples from China's Chang'e 5 spacecraft and discovered iron-rich and titanium-rich compounds that might be able to act as a catalyst in a process called the extraterrestrial photosynthesis strategy. This strategy uses lunar soil to transform water from the moon into hydrogen and oxygen. When astronauts exhale in space, they are producing carbon dioxide that could be used with the hydrogen from water electrolysis to produce hydrocarbons such as methane. The methane could be used as fuel for continued space travel. The paper that produced these findings is part of research scientists have been doing into how resources found on the moon can be used to further space exploration. 
Space travel is a costly endeavor, and the team is trying to find cost-reducing local resources to make space exploration more possible. Multiple space organizations across several countries are getting in on the action. Along with China's plans to test technology that uses local resources, NASA is also planning to create a long-term plan for a sustainable presence on the Moon with the Artemis program. The Artemis program aims to put people back on the Moon by the mid-2020s and set up a research station in the South Pole of the Moon by the late 2020s. Chang'e has been a massive success, as it was able to bring back the lunar samples that the team used to make this discovery. Incredibly, it was the first time in almost 50 years that a successful moon sample return occurred, the last time being the Soviet Lunar 24 mission in 1976. Scientists will undoubtedly use this success to discover more secrets of the universe. In the past few years, there have been some incredible space discoveries that have captured our attention. From technological advancements to new planets, the universe continues to surprise us with its endless possibilities. Scientists have found a mysterious distant object sitting at the edge of our solar system. No scientific discovery comes easily. For years, scientists have been searching for Planet X, an undiscovered world that astronomers believe is lying on the edges of our solar system but they have not been able to get concrete proof of this. However, that might have changed with the discovery of a mysterious distant object they found at the edge of our solar system. The object has an orbit that makes it seem like there is a super-Earth around it. Believing that planet X is affecting the object, astronomers ran the simulations of the object's orbit and deduced that a super-Earth-like object would make sense with how the newly discovered object is moving through the solar system. This object, named 2015 TG387, is most likely a dwarf planet with a 300km diameter. It is also two and a half times farther away from our Sun than Pluto, and while the object's orbit takes it to about 2,300 astronomical units, Pluto's lies at 34 astronomical units. Suffice to say, the object is very far away. Due to its distance, 2015 TG387 is one of the few objects in our solar system, along with other inner Oort cloud objects like 2012, VP113 and Sedna that are not affected by the giant planets Neptune and Jupiter. Astronomers say studying those types of isolated objects would be incredibly valuable, and that there may be many more than we realize. But due to their distance, that seems to be a challenging task. According to the University of Hawaii's David Tholen, the only reason astronomers were able to find 2015 TG387 is because it was near its closest distance to the Sun, while, for some 99% of its 40,000-year orbit, it would be too faint to see. Astronomers certainly will not give up on trying. As Carnegie astronomer Scott Shepard, who also led the research, stated, these distant objects are like breadcrumbs leading us to planet X. The more of them we can find, the better we can understand the outer solar system and the possible planet that we think is shaping their orbits, a discovery that would redefine our knowledge of the solar system's evolution. Radio astronomers discover Saturn-sized exoplanets using radio waves. A more recent avenue that is being explored in astrophysics is the search for exoplanets, propelled forth largely by TESS, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite a space telescope designed for NASA's Explorer program. So far, we know of 5,054 exoplanets, 227 of which have been confirmed by TESS, and an additional 3,852 are waiting for TESS to check them out. While TESS has been monumental to this research, there are other methods being used to track these exoplanets down too. In 2020, an exoplanet was discovered with a mass not too dissimilar to Saturn. It was not the discovery of the exoplanet, nor the star it orbits, however, that caught the attention of astronomers, but rather the way in which it was found. These astronomers used a radio telescope to track the movement of the star this planet orbits through the Milky Way. From this movement, they were able to see that the slight winding path reflected the path of a star whose journey is slightly altered by the gravitational impact of an orbiting exoplanet. 
This technique is groundbreaking, and while radio telescopes have had plenty of other functions and pivotal roles to play up until now, this 2020 discovery marks the first time this technique, monitoring the movement of the star, has been completed using a radio telescope. The research surrounding exoplanets is fascinating, and it is truly revolutionary if we find alternate techniques and methods that we can make use of whilst conducting these searches of the skies. A supernova could light up the Milky Way at any time. Perhaps the last time we had a close star to us explode was in the February of 1987. Its explosion was monumental, driving forth advancements in astrophysics and breaking the media worldwide. For us here on Earth, we saw a sudden bright light in the sky. Now, we have reason to believe that another supernova could follow suit sometime in the not-too-distant future. Researchers can assess the likelihood of this occurring from the neutrinos coming from the supernova. Masayuki Nakahata and Keiko Hirata spotted the evidence of this happening thanks to the Kamiokande 2 detector at the Kamioka Underground Observatory near Hida, Japan. The pair were the first to spot these fundamental particles coming from anywhere outside of our own solar system. Nakahata, who is now a physicist at the University of Tokyo, is the head of the world's largest neutrino experiment of its kind, known as Super Kamiokande. This system will allow the observatory's computers to see in, almost real-time, when neutrinos are being detected so that an automated alert can be sent out to the conventional telescopes all around the world, making sure as many people are able to witness this event as possible. Alec Habig, an astrophysicist at the University of Minnesota, Duluth, said, It's going to give everyone the willies. By giving astronomers worldwide the advanced notice, everyone can be ready to catch this event. The early warning provided by Super Cameo Candy means that plenty of telescopes can turn, in many cases automatically, towards the supernova. When the skies are lit up, we can expect it to be brighter than a full moon, visible during the daytime and overwhelm the sensors in our telescopes which are used to looking for hard-to-spot details. It is rare for us to observe a supernova up close, an event we do not often witness and gives us a tremendous opportunity. Strongest Mars Quakes Yet, Discovered by NASA's InSight Lander Now leaving behind the remarkable discoveries we can find here on our own planet, similar fascinating findings have been made on our neighbour Mars. On September 18th, InSight Mars Lander's 1000th day on the surface of the Red Planet, the rover detected one of the biggest Mars quakes yet, with an estimated magnitude of 4.2, and even more impressively, it shook the ground for almost 90 whole minutes making it also the longest recorded Mars quake to date. Similar quakes had been recorded a month ago in August. With magnitudes of 4.2 and 4.1, these Mars quakes all make for revolutionary discoveries, as they have five times the energy of InSight's previous record holder, which was a 3.7 quake recorded in 2019. It is wondered by some whether these are truly the largest Mars quakes out there, or if we simply have not been able to pick up on others perhaps due to lack of equipment or simply because in the grand scheme of things we have not been exploring Mars for that long. Regardless, this is an even more fascinating discovery because InSight nearly would have missed it due to some unfortunate circumstances in its orbit. Being solar-powered, InSight faced some difficulties when Mars's highly elliptical orbit took it further away from the Sun for a prolonged period of time. Low temperatures and dust buildup further worsened conditions for the spacecraft meaning NASA had to turn off certain instruments to conserve energy. Extremely luckily for us is that they decided to keep the seismometer on even throughout these challenging times. It makes for an even more exciting discovery that thanks to the teams at NASA we did not miss out on. We may live in a massive cosmic void. In 2013, the University of Wisconsin-Madison's astronomer Amy Barger and her student Ryan Keegan made an interesting discovery. They found that the density of our nearby universe is lower than that of other parts. The density of the universe is largely uniform. However, if you break the universe up into smaller parts, it begins to look a lot like a block of Swiss cheese. These smaller parts have certain sections that are very densely packed and others that are more sparsely populated. 
Research suggests that Earth sits squarely in one of these bearer sections, hence the suggestion that if the universe is a big block of Swiss cheese, Earth sits in one of its holes. In fact, one of Amy Barger's students, Ben Hoscheit, presented new research at a meeting of the American Astronomical Society. Hoscheit looked at disparities in measures of the Hubble constant, the number we use to describe the rate at which the universe is growing. Since it describes the condition of our universe, Hubble's constant is expected to stay the same throughout the universe. However, Hoshite found an important difference. To get a local measurement, he found Hubble's constant by analyzing the movement of relatively close type 1a supernovas. To get a cosmic measurement, he used cosmic microwave background radiation, leftovers from the Big Bang. Hoshite believes that the massive void theory, also known as the Swiss cheese theory, may be to blame for the disparity in Hubble's constant, saying, the constant is higher using the supernova method. This is in accordance with how we would expect a void to affect the Hubble constant. Gravity from higher density areas is pulling things out of the void at a faster rate than we would otherwise expect. Surprisingly, the astronomical research community seems to be in agreement on the massive void theory. Researchers believe that this particular void is seven times bigger than any other void they have ever measured and our galaxy is a few hundred million light-years away from the void's centre. Surely, such findings serve to remind us once again how minuscule we are in the context of the universe. Even so, this relatively new theory brings us a step closer to understanding how our universe is built, structured and designed, and it may help us solve other mysteries in the future. Sometimes when we pass someone on the street, read something on the news, hear a story told by a friend, it can take us a moment to remember that the world is so much bigger than our own lives. There is a great deal of fascinating research exploring the world beyond our own. Whether it's looking at the composition of some of the wonders out there, or trying to find answers behind mysteries we have observed. Astronomers conduct an abundance of research aiming to answer a variety of questions and find us answers as to what lies beyond our own familiar horizons. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three recent discoveries, exploring unusual and unanticipated quirks we have seen out there beyond our own little world. Mysterious new planet ring system discovered inside our solar system. In February of 2023, reports have been shared of a dwarf planet featuring some unusual characteristics that have left scientists trying to understand precisely how and why the expected process has not occurred. In the outskirts of our very own solar system, just beyond Neptune, a dwarf planet has been seen with a distant ring forming around it. This ring, comprised of a mixture of dust and debris, has been likened to those of Saturn though this dwarf planet's ring is a little more of a shock due to just how far it sits from the planetary body itself. Our solar system boasts several dwarf planets, the most famous of which is, of course, Pluto. Some of these sit along the edge of our solar system, orbiting in a radius larger than that of Neptune, earning themselves the name of trans-Neptunian objects. One such object is Quao, a dwarf planet with an unusual ring. We have a fair few examples of planetary rings within our own solar system, whilst Saturn has a whole host. We can also see similar rings around Jupiter, Neptune and Uranus. Even within dwarf planets and trans-Neptunian objects, we have observed rings in bodies such as Hormia and Chiriclo. Even with all these examples, Quao remains an outsider. The ring surrounding Quao sits unusually far from the dwarf planet itself. So far out, in fact, that prior to conducting these observations, it was assumed to be impossible for a ring to sit so far out. The ring sits at a radius of 2,420 miles away from the centre of the dwarf planet. At that distance, it has been thought that the gravitational pull from Quao and planetary bodies alike would be too small for the material to remain spread out and dispersed in this manner. When the materials sit outside of the distance, known as the Roche limit, 
we have expected and seen before that the material coalesces under its own gravity, forming another moon. This is the first time we have seen a ring sit outside of the Roche limit. Now that we have confirmed that our current understanding is not quite right, we need to look at revising the Roche limit, or rather, what can and cannot exist outside of it. Either that, or there is a different underlying function to the Quaor ring and it should be considered something entirely distinct from others that have been previously observed. Amateur astronomer discovers new moon orbiting Jupiter For the first time ever, an amateur astronomer discovered a new moon in our galaxy. After poring over photos of possible Jovian moons, Kai Li discovered a new moon orbiting Jupiter. This is not the first discovery that Kai Li has made. In 2020, they discovered four lost Jupiter moons. Li used old telescope images from 2003 taken by the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope to find the new Jupiter moon. They were interested in finding another moon on Jupiter, so they analyzed the photos and discovered three possible moons. Then, with photos taken days later, one of the potential moons remained. Li paid a lot of attention to the photos taken in 2003 because the moons were at their brightest. In 2003, the moons were experiencing a phenomenon called opposition. Opposition occurs when a planet and the sun appear on opposite ends of the Earth's sky, illuminating the planet's system and satellites. In February 2003, this occurred in Jupiter. Li continued to trace the moon's orbit from images taken from 2003 through to 2018. In total, there were roughly 76 sightings of the moon over a 15-year period. The moon was found in the Calm Cluster, which includes 22 other space rocks that share similar orbit patterns. Calm is the largest rock in this cluster. While Li first thought the moon might be another satellite rock orbiting near Calm, they learned that it was a moon after they calculated the object's trajectory. It is incredible Li was able to view the moon since some of the Jupiter moons are so small that they can only be detected once a year by even the largest telescope. Li hopes to make more discoveries in the future, although they described moon hunting as a summer hobby before I returned to school. More moon discoveries are definitely possible. In 2020, Edward Ashton, Matthew Boudouin and Brett J. Gladman from the University of British Columbia have made preliminary observations that suggest Jupiter could have over 600 satellite moons. Astronomers discover spooky object emitting energy in space. Following unknown signals is a well-established method in the field of astrophysics. Researchers will detect something a little out of the ordinary, and then begins the quest to find answers as to where it may be coming from. Recently, a team of astronomers detected an energy burst from 4,000 light-years away, so intense that it was one of the most prevalent radio sources. It was detected as frequently as every 20 minutes, with each burst lasting for one minute. This cycle would repeat for a short while, then would go undetected for several hours before resuming. While following up on unknown signals is nothing new, it's rather baffling that the radio burst would disappear and reappear over the span of several hours. Lead author of the study, astrophysicist Natasha Hurley-Walker, described this as quite spooky due to the previously unseen nature of these reappearing bursts. We are used to seeing slow transient bursts, lasting over a few days, before dropping off of our radar for a number of months before resurfacing or fast transients in which we see flashes with durations of just milliseconds. Within either of these known categories, it's clear we are observing something entirely distinct from either of these. Theories are in progress, though with no definitive answers. It has been suggested that it could be being emitted from a slowly spinning neutron star, known as an ultra-long period magnetar, though further research is required to bring this forth past speculation. There are many things out there for us to discover to get us to stop and recalculate previous categories and definitions, all bringing us closer to further answers. With each discovery we make, we find out more and get one step closer to having the right understanding of the world out there.
But what are your thoughts on these recent space events? Be sure to let us know in the comments section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.